In 1930, the Republican-controlled House of Representatives, in an effort to alleviate the effects of... Anyone? 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 We've all seen that person that knows it all. Do you know that guy that knows everything? Well, that's not what you're getting here. I'm a know-nothing kind of guy, just trying to broaden my horizons. Join me on my journey of Scotty Doesn't Know. So, hey everybody, what's going on? This is Scotty, and I don't know. Cheers. Oh, so much foam. I gotta figure that one out yet. So, me and the missus have traveled a little bit, but not everywhere, and not quite as extensively as my next guest. Uh, tonight, I'm joined by Brian and Don, and uh, they had a whirlwind adventure at the uh, the start of COVID, and we're going to talk about it. We got some nice little pictures that you can look at, and uh, we're going from there. So, evening, guys. Thanks for coming in. Thanks for having us. No worries. So, Brian, we've known each other forty six years, probably pretty close to that. Maybe forty three. Forty three. I think we did like pre pre kindergarten. Yeah, I think we might have done some preschool together. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But um yeah, we haven't seen each other in um quite a few years. Mm-hmm. Uh lots of comments on Facebook pages and whatnot. But uh yeah, so we kind of retouched and really a lot of communication in the last uh 18 to 24 months as you guys have uh kind of started posting a lot more about your life. So the end of the day uh we're 2019 and this strange virus uh hits and these uh rumors of covid uh start and you guys make a choice to liquidate your lives and uh travel so i know you are at the start of this you're in the service industry Mm -hmm. so you're at home (laughs) Yeah, I was uh, I was working two jobs at the time. Uh, my birthday was March or is March fifteenth, and then uh, the country shut down on March sixteenth. Happy birthday Happy to birthday. you! Yeah, I went into work on the sixteenth, and there was no tables to serve, and we were all sitting around watching the news on uh, I believe it was CP two four, waiting for the the announcement that we all knew was going to come. And uh, they said, "Yeah, we're uh, restaurants, everything shut down." So I went home, and I knew for sure. You know, I, I'd been Doing following a lot online, uh, doing a lot of reading, and I knew this wasn't going to be something that was going to be like they said two weeks. You know, <laughs> flatten the curve. Flatten the curve for two weeks. Yeah, I. Uh, We'd only done it for three. <laughs> <laughs> right. What What I had read was, and what I took it when the government said, you know, we'll flatten the curve for two weeks. It wasn't. It was going to be over in two weeks. They just didn't want it to keep spiking in an upward direction. They wanted it to level off, and a lot of people took that to mean. Oh, no, we're going to be good in two weeks. No, we're not going to be good in two weeks. This is going to be around for a long time. And somebody that's in the restaurant industry and, you know, uh, 75% of my livelihood is uh, gratuities. And if I'm not making gratuities, and even if they bring me in to do takeout or do whatever, it's I'm not going to be making nearly what I was. And uh, I, I thought, you know, what, what's the point in doing this? You know, I, I don't have uh, an education like my wife does to fall back onto. and. <laughs> solidarity right and uh <sighs> my, my my options are limited i uh you know i've got a lot of uh, health issues where i've got a lot of body pain and i can't sit for a long time i can't stand for a long time i can't do a lot of things for a long time i gotta kind of keep moving but not physically <laughs> if that makes any sense it 100 <laughs> percent um yeah i mean this is the thing right so it's like retraining doesn't make sense for you it's not like we're going to put you behind a desk. We're not going to teach you to be a programmer. We're not going to, right? Those are just things that you know at this point in your life that you're not going to do. Oh, exactly. Yeah. So, Don, where did this catch you? What were you up to? So, um, I was a guest experience manager for a recreational axe throwing company. Fantastic. We love, <laughs> I love axe throwing. I do too. I'm not good at it at all. At all. <laughs> um, but, um, so our head office was in uh, Toronto, but all my locations were in the U.S. So I was going back and forth a lot. Um, and right before I got let go, because if you don't have 
customers. You can't train your people and all that <laughs> if you're stuff. closing your stores. You can't, you know, deal with all the things you need to deal with. Um, I was actually helping uh, put a basically a disaster plan in place. Right. F- help us figure out what we're going to do when this is all. Right. So. And um, we were part of the International Association of uh, Amusement Parks and f- Family Gaming. And so they had resources for us. And I was really just looking into the resources and saying to my bosses, like, I think this this is going to be bigger than we all think it is. Right. And so and then I was jobless. But <sighs> Man, it's I laugh because right they, they they give all this stuff to replanning. Um, so Michelle works at BDO, my wife, right. and uh, she did their back to work plan. And I'm like, she's like, you know, you have like people with degrees in HR, and you're you're, you're letting the office staff. She's like, I'm a glorified secretary, and I'm doing the back to work plan. And it's like, okay. And they're like, that was really good. We're gonna roll that out night na- nationwide. And she's like whatever whenever that happens <laughs> yeah and it's like but she's like i can't believe like and right you know prepared by michelle elder and it's just ridiculous and it's Very like special. i think like, there's no letters behind her name right she got a diploma in office management it's oh. like it's not like she's not an accountant she's not <laughs> this she's not that she just but you know michelle she likes rule she likes being in charge so she does very good at what she does i think we have a lot in common with our wives <laughs> yes i think i think our company held on as long as possible it's and, tough uh, and again the, their locations are all in the states and so each location has different rules because different states very and, different and i couldn't travel to them <clears throat> no so and i'll be honest i actually i actually think i did get covid because in november of i guess it would have been 2019 before the pandemic so it would have been 2019 yeah. yep so november i went to a uh a conference for our association in orlando with forty thousand people right. and because we're part of the amusement parks and family gaming we were at disney we were at Everywhere. universal Stu- like we were you know, and people from all over the world yep so, and, I mean- and i was very sick in december yep. as was everybody in my office and we all fly a lot and uh so it's crazy i, I kept saying to my boss like i never get sick like this and it just wouldn't go away and it wouldn't go away and it wouldn't go away. i'd go back to work for a couple of days and then i'd crash again yeah you know so <sighs> it's funny how many people like that early late 2019 and 20 and they're like i think i had it in january and you're like you might have <sighs> but okay. you, you know they're so long dragging so come March, you're so what day did you you're no longer working at what point? It was after you, right? I, I don't remember. So like, anyway, like within the same couple of weeks. Yeah, which was right, yeah. The, yeah. The, the, the official the country lockdown. basically shut down yep. March sixteenth. Um we had always planned on traveling. You've uh, traveled lots. Mm-hmm. A little bit here and there, yeah. yeah. Uh but we had planned on doing it seriously later in life. Uh the the thought kind of really was once the last kid goes off to post secondary. We're really not going to be needed anymore. Um, <laughs> You're always needed. <laughs> well, you know, my, my three live yep. with their mother. Yep. Her son lives with his father. Yep. Uh, we try to be part of their lives. And Don, more than myself, is more part of life. My, You know, and, and I get it. I've you got kids, and they've got a set of parents here and a set of parents there. They've got their friends, their teenagers. Yep. The last thing they do want to want to hang out with parents, especially a second set. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I, and I get that. It's my weekend. You have to come and see me. Right? And that's the and way. And they don't yeah. want to come. Nope. And they got a party. They got this going on, that going on. And then you haven't seen them in five months. Yeah. And, and so we we talked to them. We Don and I sat down and hashed out, and she said, "You know what." I think that we should do this. And I said, okay, I, I'm on. Let's do it. Never in a million years <laughs> did I think he would say yes. There you go. <laughs> I think she might have asked just in a joke. Yeah. Man and, of and mystery. Here we, are, yeah. Uh, yeah. here we are a year and a half later. <laughs> I like that idea. Um, so then we started planning and we were like, okay, well, first thing we need to do is get rid of the house. And uh, so we you know, contacted our realtor and she did a walkthrough and did some fluffing of pillows and put it on the market. Now it and, was how we started to see that insane climb. Yeah, so the, the so market right, started perfect. to go up. Um, we put it on the market July. No, that was the closing. Let's say it was June, early June. Uh, we put it on the market. Um, we held offers for I think a week, and uh, then we had a bidding war. Uh, we had like ten, seven or eight offers in the first hour, 
And then we did a little back and forth and our house sold and uh, sold for more than we thought. Well, sold for around what I thought it would be. <laughs> um, and again, the market has skyrocketed because we're in Oshawa and everybody is now starting to realize I can work from home. I can work from home and I can do it cheaper Yeah, somewhere else. And I get a double the property and double the house for half the price. Yeah. And so there's, again, there's bidding wars happening. And, uh, you know, I talked to a few of my neighbors and our house sold for more than any house that ever sold in our street. And we were not the nicest house. Yeah. So a lot of neighbors sitting there going, oh, maybe it's we should only, sell. It's only good for, right? <laughs> it's, yeah, but the problem the is start. you got to buy. We're not going to buy. Yeah. So, you know, and then we started decluttering the, the house. And, you know, we even found challenges just donating stuff. Nobody would take it. Early so, on. because Salvation Army closed churches. Yep. Uh, we finally were able to get a hold of somebody that knew somebody at a church. And we gave them like 20 garbage bags full of clothes. Yep. And Linen, we were selling yellow. stuff on Marketplace. We were selling stuff on Kijiji. We were selling stuff on Buy and Sells on Facebook. And you realize, you start going through all this stuff. You start realizing all the stuff you really have. Oh, man, I haven't used this in four years. No. I haven't worn this in two yep. years. You know, you just have all this stuff. And, well, I had this stuff for the kids in case they wanted to use it. And they hadn't used it in years. Yeah, and, you, right? Send out a couple stuff. messages and be like, I got stuff. Does anybody want stuff? And if they don't answer back, yeah, it's yeah. gone. So you liquidate. So we liquidate. And, and it, it was interesting because we would go through these like little rounds and be like, I don't need this stuff. I'm going to sell this stuff, but I'm, I'm going to need this or I'm going to need that. And I then, love your oh, wedding dress. Yes. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a lovely I, way to do it. I really wanted to donate it, but I couldn't donate yep. it. So we had to do something. You got your mom it. handy. Yeah. So she did a couple pillows and uh, downsized it. Yes. So that that yeah. is lovely. Yeah. So my nieces get to play dress up <laughs> brides. The and, little princesses. Yeah. There's a, a a pillow for when my son gets married. Yeah. When he, you know, so there's a a something old. Barrel, I guess hello something yeah. Board, I yeah. but i think like through the process is like every few weeks we'd be like i really don't need this and we'd get rid of it but i need this and then the next yeah. few weeks you'd be like no i really don't need this. yes and and where am i going to put it what, when you so, start looking at your possessions as a whole and you think okay just because let's say it's you know we're in west's story let's say it's a he-man figure and to wes this is the most important figure of his entire shop and if he's got kids his kids are going to look at who's he-man yeah well, what does this mean to me and so you're going through your stuff and you're like, okay, do, do I want to keep this? And, you know, do, what do I want to pass on to my kids? And are they, are they really going to look at it and go, what is oh, this for? Bud. So Fred and Catherine <laughs> uh, sold Fenlon, moved to Bowmanville. They have now sold the house in Bowmanville, moved to Newcastle. They are now condo people. Nice. You cannot get a house full of shit into a condo. No. And... Uh, <laughs> It's hilarious, and they're like, and going through stuff, and he's like, "Do you want this?" And I'm like, "No," because you already got a house full. I got a house full of my own shit, <laughs> and um, but it's funny too because there's still I don't know, if, just that inkling. And I've told the story, but he's like, uh, "The the electric lawnmower? Do, do you want it?" I'm like, "No, I have a gas powered one. I have a, a man's lawnmower, and uh, it's in good shape. It's okay." My mom's like, "Okay, we'll just leave it at the end of the road." I'm like, "You're not putting it at the end." I'm Throw it in the U-Haul. I'm taking it home. <laughs> Giving it away. Sell it on Kijiji. <laughs> Gave it to my uh, my boss. Who? Oh, perfect. yeah, and, right. They're saving the world and wonderful people. And they're like, they're still using like a manual. Uh -oh. And he's like, "Did you say you had an electric lawnmower?" I says, "It's yours." So Ro wrote a nice letter to Fred and Catherine saying, "Thank you for the lawnmower." Perfect. And then the grandfather clock. Do you remember that god awful thing in our oh, house? Wow. Fuck. I think and I it, remember staying the night and then keeping me up. And uh, <laughs> fucking bonged every, yeah. yeah. It wasn't like the cool ones that you could make it stop ringing from like midnight to six. <laughs> he must have asked me a dozen times. So I'm out telling this kind of story to somebody else. And he's like, I've always wanted a grandfather clock. And I'm like, dad, do you still got the clock? And he's like, <laughs> yeah, it's still, still in the saran wrap and bubble wrap from when it moved from Fenland. Perfect. I'm, I'm coming to pick it up. Somebody's going to take it. So it's in their man shop now. And uh, it looks wonderful on the wall. Kind Amazing. Of, yeah. And I'm like, perfect. Somebody got use of it. Everybody likes something. <laughs> but uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I laughed. But uh, yeah, and they, right, same thing. Don't hang on to it because you're just going to make your kids deal with it in 20 so years. When we were all finished, we both had a Rubbermaid bin and that's it. It. And then we had a large backpack and a small backpack for our traveling. The Rubbermaid bins went to her parents' place right. at the cottage in storage. And then it's just a few keepsakes and a few little things, like nothing Have really. Maybe no, they're not even not even or... stuff of value. Like we sold anything that was worth that. We're just like 
you're I don't have jewelry. She barely has any yeah, jewelry. You're financing a trip. Yeah. Um, we sold our vehicles. We yep. sold everything. Yeah. So like that, and people would meet us on, what do you, what do you mean? I'm like, you see that backpack and that, and what I'm carrying? That's all I own in the world. Yeah. That's it. It's very freeing, you know? <laughs> yes, it is. I'm not prepared <laughs> to be that free. Still it's, got uh, yeah. it's a process for sure. Um, yeah. So then you had some time to kill before you took off on the adventure. Yes. 10 whole weeks of living so, with the parents. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, you, you did a lot. You visited people oh, and yeah, you were, yeah. um, I mean, dull we, Rimple. Is that right? Yeah. Like Dalrymple. Yeah. When we say that we lived with them, they have a bunkie. So we were in a separate building. Nice. I mean, we may have shared some meals yeah. together and, but a lot of times, you know, we take off for dinner, go see friends, go get a massage, yeah. whatever. Yeah, 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 yeah. We went to Port Sydney for a few days. Yeah. Yeah. A friend of mine owns a lodge up there so. and we went to stay there for a couple of days. Cool. And, yeah. yeah. So, right. You got to be tourists in Ontario. Yeah. A little yeah. Bit. Which, yeah. right. I think no one ever has enough time to do. You did that recently too. And so did we West. Did. Yeah. We did. We did. We went do, down. Do double decker bus downtown. No, no, they um, went. We went Ontario. Uh, oh, we went Ontario. to um, Prince Edward uh, oh. County. Oh, right. So it was good. Two days. Um, drank a lot. <sighs> and we'll, do. You were doing and, gin samplings at ten in the morning. Man, it was awesome. It's like Who gets a flight of gin. <laughs> yeah, we're driving down, and it's like, it's, and you're looking, and everything's cider and wine, cider mm-hmm. and wine. I'm like, hooray! Um, and then we're driving to the first place we're gonna go. And I'm like, turn left. That said, there was a distillery down on that road and pop down and nice little place. And yeah, we got a flight of gin and vodka and <laughs> like that in the morning. <laughs> at, the, at the end of the day, they're very responsible. So oh, yeah. everything's a quarter ounce. Yeah. So you get four drinks and another drink. So you basically had an ounce. Yeah. So um, very responsible. And uh, but yeah, and I mean, right. It, it's It's also posting it. And you know me from way back. It's like, it's about the story. Mm-hmm. I'm like, man, if I can get a story out of this and somebody in the giggle, oh, I love it. <laughs> so it's like post. And then we came over the hill and I could see the golden arches. Do you remember that? <laughs> yes. Do you remember the dinosaur that made the trip from Windsor to back to Fenland? On the in the little uh whatever those little square things are in the back of the truck? Yeah, yeah. But I was referring to your uh, speech in grade seven. Ooh, your oral speech. My oral speech. On your the, vacation. The golden and then we arches. came over the, because f- you had gone camping, I think, yeah. with the family. Maybe. And then the that was the highlight? Was the, the highlight was coming over the hill and seeing those golden arches. I still like <laughs> I still like McDonald's. It's terrible. <laughs> it's terrible for me. But yeah. But yeah, I mean, I hated talking there. And it's gotten better. But yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I laugh. But uh, those, yeah, good times back then. Oh. <laughs> But uh, so you did a whole whack of, and right before you left, uh, you headed out as far west as you could go. Well, not quite as far. No. No, we went to the the island. Oh, you went as far west as you could. sure did. So a little trip to BC. Mm -hmm. So this one is. So that's the sea to along the sea to sky highway. So going from Vancouver up to Whistler. And I just looked the water. Look at the water. Yeah. It's so beautiful. Now, to me, when I look at that picture, I feel like all those trees that are missing on the other side of the lake, is that like... Those are just darker shades. Okay. Or, to, or there, to could, me, there, there could, could have, have been, been an avalanche. avalanche. That's what I felt like. Oh, that's yeah. where that's where <laughs> it all came crashing Very down. Very possible. Yeah. All right. yeah. But uh, yeah, so you went out there. How long were you out there for? Three weeks? Yeah, I'd say... Two, three weeks. Yeah, about three weeks. My dad lives in Chilliwack. Right. So we stayed with them and they gave us a car. Or they gave us one of their cars to. Yep. And we had friends on the island that we went to visit. They were from Ontario and one of our military friends who's at the base there. So we went and went whale watching and spent. Did all the stuff. I've never been to the island before. Oh, maybe once as a kid. But I've been to BC once and I think I was 10 or 12. So it had been a while. Yeah. yeah. I've never been over the mountains as far as Alberta. So I grew up kind of in the mountains. And when we see and Vancouver, Calgary. When we were there for the, quite a few of the first days, you couldn't see much. You couldn't even see the mountains because the smoke was still coming up from Washington. They had forest fires going on down there. And uh, I was joking with my father. I'm like, There's no mountains here. What are you talking about, man? Yeah. You're lying to me. <laughs> <laughs> that's the new, like, right? That's for the new days. norm. Yeah. Right? And I mean, I'm sure it's so the different... weather shifts and the wind shift. And it goes, blows it out. Yeah. yeah. Like when we took the ferry over to uh, Victoria, you couldn't see anything. Oh, 
So scary, right? Mm-hmm. And then coming back, you're like, wow, look at the view. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Didn't see this on the way out. So I think this next picture really talks about um, the whole experience of... Uh... Doesn't that tell you yeah, all that's about COVID. everything that... No sweet Caroline. <laughs> yeah, no right? touching, no holding no, yeah, yeah, yeah. No reaching out, no <laughs> touching me, no touching you. I thought that was cute. Yeah. So uh, very much where uh, we got. So then Dawn sent me, I asked her for some funny pictures as well and ones that make good little stories. <laughs> so she sent me this one, <laughs> which uh, am I assuming this is something like a sheepy? It's a shiwi. A shiwi. A shiwi, sheepy, go yeah. girl. A... That's what it is. All right. That's exactly it. I wondered. I'm like, Saved good my for butt you. a lot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> in a lot of countries. <sighs> yeah. Well, I mean, too, is you, you get to tropical locations, you might not want to be hanging your arse over a log. <laughs> In the tropical jungle. Mm-hmm. Yes, as you'll see from the bug pictures later. Oof, there was actually a time when my wife and I were standing there overlooking and looking at the beautiful, and we were both standing there peeing. <laughs> <laughs> I really had to go. I mean, you're at the top of a mountain in the middle of nowhere. You do, uh, you gotta, I think that's great. So much easier than squatting. And obviously, you can get them at sale. <laughs> yes. And they're reasonably priced at twelve ninety nine. And they're silicone, There's the price so tag, they're easy oh, to easily right? kind of, yeah, they fold up into... I guess it's dishwasher safe, probably, too. Probably. Not that we've had a dishwasher. Just like all your other enough. silicone toys. Right. <laughs> <laughs> That's a whole nother episode. Uh, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, I thought that would be... I thought she's probably it's not on your list. Maybe you do know. I don't know. <sighs> You'll see. Ah, it's all good. So, uh, first stop, Costa Rica. Yes. So that's cool. Um, so you get there. Uh, now, that was a flight back to home, Toronto, and then Toronto. Nothing seemed direct either. Right. <laughs> Originally, it was a fairly direct flight, but then Air Canada had canceled flights out of Houston. And I, I luckily was able to get a hold of someone on the phone for Air Canada. That never happens. Uh, so... Um, the woman actually worked with me and figured out just how to get us there. Right. So it was Vancouver back to Toronto, Toronto to Newark, Newark to... Then straight through, I think. Then, yeah, Newark to... Are you sure? I think so. Maybe yeah, and then through. Newark to uh, Liberia. Yeah. yeah. And then before we get too far into this, Don, you're the planner? Yeah. 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 So, it, it, there was a lot of uh, planning disasters along the way. Right. It was a challenge. <laughs> I mean, it, it's it's not like you go online and you buy your tickets. Now you got to go online, find out what the country's acceptance requests are because mm-hmm. of COVID. So some, I mean, now it's going to be even more because a lot of countries are going to ask for a double vaccination, one vaccination, the same vaccine. Anyway, that's a whole other thing. But yep. then it was you needed to get yourself a COVID test within, say, 48 hours or 72 hours. Every country hours. was different yep. for the amount of hours. You'd go. Uh, and when you, before you take off, you'd have to show them the negative COVID test. And then when you land, you had to show them the negative COVID test and every country was different. And then some places you were quarantining longer than others. And some, some were no quarantine. No quarantine. Costa Rica so, had no quarantine. Right. But we had, we needed a COVID test with 72 hours before we arrived. And we had booked an, um, we booked tests in Vancouver and then the government decided that all all labs were to do government tests. Do test only, A. Not people who are traveling and paying because we were going to pay through the nose for this test. Right. So they just canceled our test and we have everything booked and we've already changed flights and everything. So we decided to chance it and we went drive through uh, to just a regular clinic in vancouver yeah drive through and got a test and gave them our um ontario Ontario health Health card they were supposed to send us um, they would have contacted us right away if we had a positive right it was a negative we would get a negative result we never got them and this is before you could access them digitally i assume yes so we ended up not getting our results before we left but we got on the flight, and it was actually Montreal we went to because right, in we... Montreal they didn't want to let us on the plane to Newark because we didn't have the test results. And I said, "Well, it we'll have them by the time we're in the air." It took a lot of convincing, but I could I could show him that we yeah had the test. yeah I had we've been our due diligence. Yeah. It's they just told us we get results within the next amount of time. Yeah. 
which is before we have to have it. Yeah. And you know, worst case scenario, we'll stay in Newark and we'll figure out our way back because they just don't want us flying straight into Costa Rica because yep. we did get we, when we landed. There was actually a couple that I don't know if they didn't have them, whatever. But they got walked right back out to the airport and sent home. Yeah. I think there had been a week, yeah. not 72 hours. What's well, funny, too, because you heard stories like that after things kind of reopened. Mm-hmm. And then, like, people that had two vaccinations, but not the right two. Right. And then you get somewhere and they're like, oh, no, we're not taking a Moderna and a AstraZeneca combination. Yeah, that's, ridiculous. Well, that's really just people not doing their due diligence yep. to actually check ahead of time. And I, I had a friend contact me because he was going to Colombia, I think it was. And he wanted to know about our experience to Costa Rica. And I, I said, honestly, the only thing you can do is call the airline and find out what it is they need. Yeah. I said, I, you can ask me, but it could change tomorrow. It could yeah. change yesterday. So these people with the sob stories are just people that just didn't. I am connected to a hundred different travel bloggers, travel sites, um, everything and everywhere, Facebook, Instagram, all over the place. So I am reading and checking constantly every day. What's, you know, what's open now? Where can we go? Where can we not go? Where it's easy to go. Right. You know, um, but Costa Rica was not easy. Now you like to fly. You nope. don't like to sit on the plane. <laughs> yeah. I like to get, I like to be where I'm going. Right. So I'm, I'm six, five and let's call it 300 plus. And, uh, <laughs> you know, a lot of these, especially in Asia, you, you sit down on these planes and my knees jammed against the thing. My hips are against these things and I'm spilling over onto the seats on either side of me and I'm there for 13 hours. Yeah. And then, you know, you hit the recline button. And now you're relaxed. Yeah. You're comfortable now. You know, it's, it gives you the two inches back and it, it's, it's horrible. And you, and you it, haven't figured out how to sleep or you can't sleep or however. I can't sleep. It, just, it, it is what it is. Um, Cause I, I feel that was your biggest commiserie is yeah. the flights. I, yeah, for sure. It is for me. I got a bad back and it, it starts to hurt after a while. And I need to stand up and stretch it. And then you're in people's way in the aisle. We usually try and get the uh, emergency exit seats with the extra leg room yeah. or the bulkhead. Um, a lot of flights, they charge extra for that. Yep. And all of a sudden my tickets can be double and it's just not affordable. No. Uh, other times it's, well, they're and just then, booked ahead and then of time. When you're in the exit seats, the arms don't lift up because in normal seats, we'll lift up the one yep. between us and he gets a seat and a quarter and I got three quarters <laughs> of a seat. She's just little. I know. <laughs> so but, loving. But so on loving. the emergency exits, that's where your food tray yep. is. And so they don't it lift up. Pulls up. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So you're stuck in there. Um, now, flights as a whole were the planes empty no some well depending on where you're going really right. it depends again yeah, some were some so were. depending um, on location, for the most part other than going into sri lanka they were all pretty full so lots of people still traveling but middle middle seat no hit and miss mm. i so, say they were still in that not filling that middle seat right kind of um lots of canadians traveling no no so americans or no. just everybody else every we so in uh, in Costa Rica, I'd say it was mainly Americans, but there weren't a lot of. When we first got there, they had just opened, so you'd go for dinner on a Friday night at six o'clock, and we'd be the only ones in the restaurant, and there'd be seven staff staying there, staring at you, going, "Oh, hi, hi." And you know what? I come definitely, in, in. as you as you look at the blog and you look at both your posts, you can very much see that, and we'll talk about that when about Egypt. Yeah. Um, the that yeah, there's a lot of you're like, man, we're the only ones here. Or the private beach comment, like you're like, I look to the right. I looked to the left. It's like I'm on a private beach. It's again, so, we, we didn't really think about that going into the traveling. We started realizing pretty quickly we were in Costa Rica, just how desolate yeah, and how devastated the tourism industry has been hit. Like it's some of the countries were closed for six, eight months. Yeah. Uh, and that's their... you know, when we moved, went into Sri Lanka, they'd only been open for a little while. And we were going to restaurants that had just opened it and it had been over a year. There was no takeout. There was nothing. Nothing. Was... When we were in Sri Lanka, we were the first Canadians in our uh, resort that they had seen in over a year. So for, you're asking about what we saw. So Costa Rica was a bit of Americans. Everywhere else, it was a lot of um, Kazakhstanians. Yeah, those Russians. They a lot, a lot of Russians. We're traveling. A lot yeah. of Kazakhstanians, um, Indians. Um, mainly that was it. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Ooh. Well, as I say, right, it's, I feel like they got us all under lock and key here. But a little bit on the other, like, on the other side of the world, there's a lot of Russians, but he, so it's almost like Americans go to Mexico. Yes. And Russians go to Sri Lanka or India or 
Africa. those islands there. So it's not everybody has a tropical right. destination. It's not surprising right. to see Closer them. for them. Yeah. It was more surprising for us to right. vacation with with um, a group of people we've never really spent time around, right? Yeah, because right as, as you say, right, we go to Cuba, we go to Mexico, and that's you're seeing. You know, maybe you'll see somebody like, oh, they're from England. <laughs> yeah. you're like, so German. yeah 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 right and that's but you you wouldn't see that because it's just a little too far for them to come to exactly. our makes yeah. no sense for them no yeah. i think these got out of sequence they did so but that is costa rica as well that is costa rica so you went one night you were very excited about this so it's called an ostinal so it's basically timed with a full moon every month hundreds and hundreds of turtles will come up onto the beach after dark and they will lay their eggs now these turtles are not endangered they are not no. because the people there <laughs> you ate their baby <laughs> <laughs> we were actually just telling the story the other night the um so we were at because we got there early so we thought we'd grab a bite to eat at a local restaurant and uh we ordered a couple of drinks some food and the bar the server came up and he hands us a couple of shots and the, in that picture there you can see the yolk yep that was because she'd already taken a small sip. But that wasn't, it's I didn't not a yolk, it's a whole it's egg. It's the whole egg, yeah. but you couldn't, I didn't realize that, neither did she. And I went, thank you very much. Hmm, that's a little chewy. <laughs> so I wasn't sure if it was jello or what it really was. So I called him over and he said, oh, turtle egg. Oh, fantastic. That I knew I tasted Tabasco. Yeah, <laughs> that, that would have done me and I'm a texture guy. And that yeah, whole, and I get that. If, if, if you're not expecting it to be that, I did not chew because he said, oh, that was kind of. Mm. Yeah. So you're like, just no. like oh, down the hatch. Like an oyster. Almost. Um, so. I th actually, I think you're wrong. I think they are endangered. Only the locals are allowed to do that. Okay. Other people can't come in. It's it's like uh, Eskimos with uh, yep. seals, right? Yep. 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 So not Eskimos, right? Inuits. Okay. Sorry. Um, it, it's the same thing. The indigenous people are have the right. Yes. Nobody else can. Right. And I don't know that they would ever lose so the right unless the country changes are, their they mind. They are allowed to you, have a certain portion that they can use as to harvest. A, well, and it's it's a money maker for it them, is right, so, and it allows them to have a sense of ownership over something that they can. But there is an entire society that's there. You can't go onto that beach unless you've got a guide. Right. You can only that, yeah. Have that red whole lights. section of beach is shut down. Yep. Yeah, it's Day very very protected. And they have actually armed security guards out there. Do you see a lot of that? Yeah. It, depending places. where you were. Yeah. In different parts of the world, it's not that you see a lot of armed security guards. It's instead of seeing a police officer with a gun on a soldier, yeah. you see a, a police soldier. officer standing there. Yeah. It, like even the police yeah. have like an I remember, I remember the first time in Cuba and it's like they're having their meeting and they've got all their guns in their little pile and you're like, hmm, smokes. But just stuff. We don't see desensitized to it, or yeah. however you put yeah. it, right? But yeah. Yeah. you get to these other places, you know, the army is the police, or the police are more mili militarized. Mm -hmm. So yeah, we have we have a police story for you later when we get Mexico. I have that picture <laughs> actually. Um, so yeah, I giggled, and then uh, that little is guy. Is that not the cutest thing you've ever his seen? His eyes your... are so huge. Doesn't it look fake? I'd give him it fifty bucks, fake, right? right? I'd give him fifty bucks right now. Yeah, He'd be like, nah, fifty know. bucks. You'd be like, here it's you like go. It's like those beanie babies with the big eyes. Um, <laughs> Talks a lot. It's um, now you have made me lose it. Sorry, That's but okay. this is at a nature reserve. Same thing. Yes. Um, yeah. And I just couldn't. I'd never seen anything that looked so beautiful. And again, they hadn't seen tourists in forever, and the only way you could go around was with a guide. And because of COVID, you get your own personal guide. Yeah, we had a one on one. He cost us no extra. Yeah. Right. But you told had to go with the guide and you told us every very and... knowledgeable. Mm -hmm. You know, you give them a few pesos, is it? It's in mm, Costa Rica. Yeah. I can't remember now. Give them a little bit of something at the end. Thank you very much. Yeah. And away you go. Mm -hmm. But, and again, that's very much their economy is tourist based and eco tourism. I used yes. to tourism. Yeah. yeah. So we saw two cans and we saw. Poisonous frogs and lizards and All animals. All different kinds of yeah. cats. Yes. Lions. And this is out and about. So is it bigger than a house cat? Looks bigger than it a is, house cat? But not that much bigger. But fairly tame. That, no. No. But how no. close are you to that? Uh, not as close as you think. Okay. That's probably an occasion. She probably took it through the mesh. Okay. Yes. I'm like, I feel like it's just you look down and it's, it's there. dropping. Yeah. <laughs> 
Good crop. Yeah, your crop out is probably mesh. <laughs> yeah, you did a good job. I love that picture so much. Now, the other thing you guys had said, um, cost of living there was high. Crazy. Well, it's all relative. I'd say it's very similar to here. But when you're going down to a country like that, I don't expect that. No. And, and when you're trying that's to, what surprised me. And when you're on a budget. When you're on a budget, and we were definitely budgeting each month, I was very surprised. Uh, gas is about the same price. Uh, eating out at a restaurant was definitely cheaper. Um, alcohol was a little bit cheaper. But so one thing we learned, uh, and Don was very good about it, when you get into a country, you join a whole bunch of Facebook groups, the expat groups, the the local buy and sells, whatever. You and, then get... find... and then so when you're looking for stuff, you can just put it out there and people give you all kinds of, you know, go to this place, go to that place. You want Italian food, you go there, whatever you're looking for. So I told them, listen, I'm looking for fresh fish. And uh, everybody gave me a bunch of answers. And really the, the commonality was go down to the beach when the guys are coming in on their boats. And they were, it was a couple hundred meters from where we were staying. When the guys are coming in off their boats, go down there with some money in your hand and tell them, look at what they have and tell them that's what I want. Okay. So I go down there and, you know, they're bringing in lobster. They're bringing in tuna, red snapper, all kinds of stuff. I'd like that. Okay. How much? He tells me. Doesn't sound right. I pull up my uh, converter. I'm like, I pay less for that in Canada for that lobster. <laughs> What? That doesn't make sense. I said, how about this much? And I gave him a price of what I thought would be a little more fair. He said, no, 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 no. There's nobody else there trying to buy it off him. No. He's going to go try and sell it at the market. There's no tourists. He, They would prefer to not sell. There you go. Isn't that interesting, right? I found it amazing. <sighs> I think for us when we travel, because of the way we travel, we, we tend to try and get an Airbnb or some sort of rental because we like to cook. Mm -hmm. and, and nobody wants to go out for breakfast every day. Sometimes you want to be in your underwear and you want a bowl of cereal or like you say, oatmeal or whatever. Firm believer that breakfast is the easiest thing to fudge when you're out, right? Because exactly. you can have like a, you, if you want a cup of coffee if you're staying somewhere, you gotta, all of a sudden you got to leave your room and then, you know. But normally, or most of the countries we've been to, when you do that, you save a lot of money because you buy groceries. We go to a lot of local markets to get vegetables and fruit. The prices were. The same as home for Costa Rica, they were very similar, were, surprisingly. Yeah. So it, we didn't save any money, right? It wasn't. It wasn't. Um, we didn't do a lot in Costa Rica because no. we were spending more than we yeah. thought we were. But I mean, uh, and Don talked to—I can't remember who you talked to. You talked to one of the locals and said, "I don't understand. If this is how much you're making a year, and these are your prices, and in Canada we make this much, but our prices are the same. How do you?" They eat a lot of rice and beans. They live off rice and beans. People that live on the water may be fishing, but they got to sell it because they can't afford to eat it. Right. Huh. There's not a lot of meat in their diet or vegetables or fruit. Right. It's funny, too, because you just don't appreciate how everybody else is living mm -hmm. versus a, a North American kind you see of the style. family of five going by on their scooter. <laughs> all five of all them five on of them. The, fam scooter. the family scooter. Yeah. <laughs> right. And here, my kids both own cars. And yeah, yeah. It's like, man, that is a driveway full of cars and mm -hmm. the elders and it's like do you we all need cars yeah we all need cars mm -hmm. but I'm yeah sure my car. <laughs> that's what it came down to but it was so beautiful there Pro um, out of honestly out of all the country we went to it's one of my favorite right i may not be able to afford to go back glad i really glad i went do you, do you ever see that change like it's inflation it's never going to go down we went on a boat tour and i think it's actually the next picture you've got there we went on a boat tour, and as we're going along, he says, that's Michael Jordan's summer place. That's Madonna's summer place. That's so... No, I saw a huge Four there. Seasons resort there. I saw a great article on that today. Yeah. And, uh, right, people like us go on vacation, and you share these pictures, and it's who we are. We want to share it, mm -hmm. and we want to show where we've been. And, you, you know, when you tell people where you are, and then slowly it gets more and more popular, and then the people that can afford to do it go and buy that property yep. and now the locals can't even afford to live where they live and that's just a lot of these countries the locals are getting forced inland because the the waterfront properties are just but there are some really great government programs like in costa rica every single beach is public it doesn't matter if the four seasons is there there Everyone is has access to have access to that beach, which is really so. Even if they so no, up, no fences into the water. No well, even if they put up two monstrosities side by side, they have to leave an alley down so the locals can go down. Right. Which, and they, they may say it's their beach, and they may put out all these uh, pavilions or whatever yep. and rent them out to other people. But 
they can only go within a certain distance of the water and the rest is for everybody. Yep. Oh, that's cool. Which is fantastic. And in Mexico, you can only own, you cannot own property from the water. And I, I don't want to give the wrong amount, but within a certain distance, it, it could be like two miles or something like that. So that is, you have to be a, a local, you have to be a Mexican in order to own that property. So it leaves it open for locals, right? Right, exactly. So as you say, I mean, there's ways around all of those uh, things. Always. Oh, there's lots of ways around stuff. But. So there you are, repping hometown. Repping hometown, happy family, family crowd. We, uh, that was actually the, uh, actually the day before that I went down to talk to the fisherman and I couldn't find any fish. And I found this guy, he says, what are you looking for? You know, like I just found my drug dealer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What are you looking for, man? And you went and caught your own fish. So he says to me, follow me. And he took me to a place and I paid more than I wanted to. And I got some lobsters and got some fish and we ate those. He says, you ever want to go on a tour? I said, eh, possibly. I said, what do you, why, what do you, he says, I'm a cap, Captain Nye? No. Nope. Cap, Captain, and Captain, a Captain something. something. Really nice little guy. Spoke pretty decent English. He says, I got a boat. I will take you out. You go for you and your wife. You go fishing. We'll be out there for three hours. Snorkeling. Well, I'll take you snorkeling. I said, okay, how much? He says, that much? I said, oh, it's a little bit much. He said, how much you want to pay? I said, how much this much? He says, okay. Probably hasn't worked in weeks. He's very happy. Right. We go out there, we fish, you know, they bait the line for us. I'm fishing. We're trolling. I'm holding the rod. I got a, oh, here we go. Reel it in. We caught a few fish. Uh, sorry. I caught zero. I caught all the fish. <laughs> he caught two at a time. Two. And I caught zero. zero. <laughs> and again, you know, we're only staying there for a month. I don't yeah. need all this fish. So we gave a couple of them to that guy. I'm like, just here, you can have them. Yep. He brought some pineapple. We went uh, snorkeling, saw some beautiful corals, some beautiful reefs, fish, beautiful. Um, and he says, uh, your wife, she wanted to see monkeys, yeah? I said, yeah, he hands me a plastic bag full of pineapple. He was on the island there. There's some monkeys. Don stood there with her hand. The monkey came and took her right out of her hand. One one was had a baby. Yeah, yeah. Right, right underneath. She grabbed it and ran. Mm -hmm. And that was actually at the Four Seasons. Down the beach from it. Yeah, yeah. down the beach from the Four Seasons. They have, they have a reef there, and the Four Seasons has committed to... Rebuilding keep, it yeah, or maintaining it? Maintain it and keep it safe. Very cool. Yeah. Yeah. As I say, thank God they finally put a brewery in so we could have de decent Finland swag to wear. <laughs> um, I feel like everybody's got a hometown t-shirt now. I don't though. know that. Do you know that we went to kindergarten with the owner? Yep. You did not? Yep. Yeah. Actually, I thought it was his brother. No, it's him. Is it? Because it's Vin. 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 I thought we went. Vim. Vim. I thought we went to school with Wing. Oh. I think. No, I don't because know. Because he said he remembered. I you. showed him the picture from our kindergarten. Yeah, place. he's yeah, like, yeah, that's, that's me. me. Yeah. Well, there you go. I know, like they came when I know all, what house they lived in too. Yeah, and they lived with the Barretts when they first came. Oh, they? Sandra and um, Bud, because that they were basically their foster family when they came, and they lived for a few years before they moved down to Toronto, right? But he was only in our school for that one year, and they were kitter kitty corner to the hockey arena, right? Yeah. But yeah, yeah, fantastic, and they've done a beautiful job. Really, yes, he, he obviously great. did okay earlier in his life because that wasn't cheap. What he did, he's a. Uh, it's a beautiful place he's done that. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's uh, it's top notch, top mm -hmm. notch. So, uh, as you said, uh, and kind of as you're posting and talking about it, you're like, you know what? We'd love to stay longer, but it's it's not going to happen. Um, and that talk about the economy and the value. So the next stop was good old Mexico. Mexico, because. It was easy. There was no tests. There was no quarantines. And it was an easy flight. We, we were having trouble finding a country to go to at that point. Most of them were closed. Because we had originally planned to go to the bottom of South America and work our way up. Well, that was also part of the problem, too. Right. We wanted to go down to the bottom of South America. And some of those countries were open. But they were blistering with COVID. Right. And like at that Brazil. point, you know, there was we no vaccine at that yeah. time. And we were like, wow, we don't want to be in the midst of that. Well, how do you how do you want to go somewhere and get sick? Right. And that. Yeah. yeah. And um, the one thing I did want to mention, though, is we got really good travel insurance and it included COVID. Yes. Which and, is crazy that now you knew that ahead of time when yeah. you left. Well, COVID, that's when well, you were looking. It was a thing. It was, was happening. Yeah. And so not only were we recovered for COVID, but if it was bad enough, they would extradite us and bring us home at their cost. Right. The insurance company. Yep. Not our own country. And I think, yeah, we, we'll, as we progress, we'll talk. Repatriate. Repatriate. We'll talk about that. And that was one thing, too, that you, you were quite honest. And you're like, do not travel with crappy 
travels insurance. Yes, I almost lost you. Yeah, get good <laughs> stuff. And it's crazy. Um, and right, how many COVID tests when you didn't feel well and it wasn't COVID? Yeah, through our whole travels, I did 15 COVID tests. Lucky you have any nose uh, hair left. And it's every country does it different. Oh. One country will shove it in your right nostril. Next country will shove it in your left. Next country will do both nostrils. Next country will shove it down your throat. Ooh. Next one will do all three. And then, and then you come back to Canada. Here, or we were in the U.S. She hands it to us and says, here, go ahead. I said, what? She's like, 15 seconds. Just around the edge. Yeah, yeah 15 seconds. I'm like, this is fantastic. Get some boogers on it. Yeah. <laughs> well, there, we've done whatever we've done. We've only just had our first uh, brush with a test there the other week. And uh, it was a deep swab. And yeah. I'm like. It honestly feels like they're picking some brain. It's so interesting. I didn't, it. She's like, uh, I just closed my eyes and tipped my head back, and I didn't even want to. I didn't want to see it coming towards me. I didn't want to see. Um, <laughs> Usually, they they hurt. They're they're not comfortable. No. The, before I went into the hospital in Sri Lanka, the woman did it so deep, I almost punched her. <laughs> I've never felt anything that painful in my life, and it was it felt like I it's was it's fucking vi- brain. It's violating, isn't it? It's violating. I got <laughs> violated, and she almost got a fistful. <laughs> uh, well, it's funny. You know what? Um, you see my post. You know I have a heart condition. No, I didn't. Well, I, yeah, I got a bad ticker. Got a thickening of my ventricle wall, but uh, non-symptomatic. So over a year to get it all diagnosed. So lucky me, you know they can see your heart better from the inside than from the outside? Oh, hey. oh it's terrible. So was when, Michelle for there for that? So she, she, was in the, she was in the waiting room. Oh, I thought she was, yeah, see yeah. how it feels? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I'll tell you the story because it's a funny story. This might so, not make the final cut. <laughs> oh, bud. Yeah, well, yeah, for sure. So, right, they tell you what they're going to do, and we know. And she's like, just remember, just open your mouth wide and relax and swallow. Yeah, just let, right? let, it, let it happen. Words from a champ. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> from a professional. Yeah. I mean, right? She's been, it's maybe, all good. Maybe. How am I not supposed to take that advice? So you get in there. The lidocaine was the worst. I got tears in my eyes, and then they got to spray you twice. So you know the second spray is coming in. I'm like, I don't want it. She's like, you have to take it. And they get you down. The lights are dimmed. You're laying on a hospital bed, and they put this. Um, well, at least they set the mood for you. Yeah, it's beautiful. And they set. They give you this donut hole mouth guard, so you mm-hmm. can't bite down on it. Mm-hmm. So you're open, and then they start putting down the internal. Uh, I guess that would Scope be an echo. Yeah. yeah. So an echocardiogram from the inside out because then they don't have to worry about your ribs. And uh, so they do it, and right? She's going, she's like, I just need you to relax and swallow. And I start to laugh. And she's like, what's funny? My wife said you'd tell me to do that. <laughs> <laughs> As you're trying to say that with that thing down your throat. Yeah. Awesome. My wife said. <laughs> but it's funny. So before me, I think they do like five a day. So little old lady didn't hear a peep. I went in and I... Crying, screaming. Yeah, well, not terrible, not compared to the next guy. So then this guy, a little younger than me, goes in and he's like, oh, "You can hear him out oh. in the like recovery." And I'm like, "Michelle, did I sound that bad?" She's like, "No," but you, she's like, "You sounded worse than the little old lady." I'm like, oh, "Legit, I'll, I'll legit." Okay with that, yeah. yeah, there there was a time I was getting the test and they were jamming down my throat and I did the huh! yeah, done right away. See, <laughs> it's so in yeah. <laughs> But it's funny, right? And it's just things you're never going to do again. So it's like, oh, yeah. Uh, Actually, I say that. We're we're heading off in October. We're going to have to get a COVID test. Yeah, the whole nine yards, right? Again. So we're in Mexico, and there's Dawn. (laughs) A couple stairs there. So one of the best things about traveling during COVID is that many of the tourist destinations are empty. Nobody. Nobody. So this was one of the... um, Mayan ruins uh, in Mexico, and there was nobody there. And when like, we say nobody, we were the only just two. us. Now, they still let you get on. The, like, so there this was some, one, yes. some you can and some you yes. can't. So Chichen Itza, you cannot. We did go to Chichen Itza. There were some people there, but not many. Right. Let's say hundreds. Normally, there's tens of thousands. Right. right. This, nobody. But still, just as um, important of a of a location to learn about the culture, and so we stayed for about two two and a half hours. Walked. It was. But beautiful. you made me climb this pyramid. Yeah. You didn't go up. I oh, took no, the picture. You did. Oh, oh, okay. No, yeah, that makes sense. So he, All right, good he for went you. Up first, then me. And um, going up's not a problem. Yeah, we stood at the top. <laughs> so just so you know, Mayans used to have much smaller feet. 
So the stairs not, are not they, as steep, they're and they're tiny. dilapidated and falling apart and right. crumbling. And, and the angle's a little... Uh, very steep. Yeah. yeah. Now, ideally, is that... That is, yes. This doesn't look that daunting, but you, know, you don't have anything in reference of it. No. Other than the sh- trees are shorter. Yeah, I could do that. <laughs> well, that's not a problem. Yeah. Except and it's not when a problem. you get to the top and you look and you go... Did you like scoot down like my granddaughter? Like nope. butt, butt on the seat? I, I went like, down, boom, but I had to boom. go down backwards because I didn't want to go down four because I was worried about tipping. Because again, it's very it's steep smart. and the the st- stairs are very niche. Yep. They're not deep. So I went down backwards so I would be leaning forward. But also I was holding her bum because she was worried about falling. I was freaking out. I, I got. <laughs> I had to, the to talk top. her down almost. Yes, <laughs> it's so much, right? I can get up. One more step, honey. One more step. It's the getting down. You said that 30 steps ago. Yeah, it's the getting down. I literally had like my stomach uh, flip-flops. I could feel the heat rise in my head. I'm no, like, what have I done? Were you wearing flip-flops? Uh, I would have been wearing Tevas. Oh, okay. But, yeah, they they wouldn't come off. Like, they're not flip-flops. I had sandals same too with the straps. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, full, yeah, like, yeah three strap velcro yeah, yeah. yeah i was yeah. like oh you made a poor footwear decision yeah no but it was it was pretty <laughs> as scary. we were leaving i was talking to the security guard uh and he said yeah usually on a typical day this is a much smaller ruin he said on a typical day they get around a thousand uh they've been averaging around 20 uh so we we were the only two there for two and a half hours mid-afternoon as we were walking out another couple was walking in and i think it was i told like, them i said enjoy your time it's beautiful and i think it cost <laughs> us four dollars right yeah, it's crazy. Very, that's a great way to spend a couple four hours bucks. for four bucks. Right. Yeah. 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 It was really cool. Those are and those are the cool things when you can do something and it doesn't cost an arm and a leg and it means so much more. And as you say, you can you can delve right in. And with and Google you, now, you can be right there on site and checking out what these things are and what they all mean. You don't actually have to have a guide. What would we do without Google? I don't know. Did you get an international plan? No. We bought a SIM card wherever we went. Ah, very cool. So there's another travel tip for everybody. There, okay. Um, yeah. When you get to an airport, the first thing you do is you buy yourself a SIM card and a data plan. And generally, um, like in some of the countries, we've got 60 megabytes, gigabytes. Okay. <laughs> we got 64 gigs in Sri Which Lanka. is oodles. 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 For 20 bucks. And... So he would just. You can get fifty and unlimited for fifty four ninety nine a month, <laughs> in comparison. Right. So says the telesat I got today. And then he would just tether off my phone. Usually we just do one data plan. We tether off each other. Most places we stayed had Wi Fi, so we so weren't using smart. it all the time. Tethered my wife when we go to America. Yeah. Shit. Yeah. If anything, I learned something. Thank you. Show, <laughs> show's over. Go home. That's we'll like, lock it up. We're done. Oh, um, that's awesome. So yeah, we use it for a lot of um, a translating or translating where you're talking to people. Yeah, language. Using it for transportation where you're going. Using it for reading menus. Reading menus where you can actually use the Google whatever. Yeah. You just hold it over and it translates it yeah. for you. Um, and the other one was uh, currencies, switching currencies back and forth. Like if you can't, if you don't remember off the top of your head exactly what it is, you can figure it out really quickly with a couple different apps. Um, Everything in Sri Lanka was six dollars for me. Six dollars, six dollars, six dollars. If if it was a uh, thousand rupees, it was sorry. If it was a hundred rupees, it was six dollars and thirty two. So cents. everything was <laughs> in my brain. It was like okay, that's six. Yeah, carry six, the six, yeah. six. carry the okay. zero. <laughs> and uh, so the next one I picked. Um, because you guys played a lot of spite and malice, a lot of cards. Yeah. Past the, the time, card game my father in law and mother in law taught us before we left. So, so it's, a, it's a game with two decks of cards. Yeah, you play against each other. So these cards didn't have a very good time, <laughs> and I think the gist of this was that Brian had won a few games in a row, and you thought it was the cards' fault. Yeah, he won pretty much a month's worth of uh, of card games and so i decided we needed a new deck <laughs> and i thought this was very poignant and important to post because i sure as shit remember he was a terrible cheater at euchre oh, i was a good cheater <laughs> yeah <laughs> like i said you would never know um i do remember a couple of times i cheated but no, most of the times i wouldn't bother there's no fun in it um yeah, and I certainly don't cheat playing this <laughs> so these cards we got at like a little roadside market in costa rica they were super super thin and they're cheap, plasticky cheap, cheap. yeah and we played them for the basically 10 times a day for a whole month in costa rica and then we went to mexico and i kept losing kept losing kept losing 
So I kept saying, oh, we need new cards. We need new cards. One's bent or... And then I really spanked her a couple games in a row and that was and it. And then I just tore you them just up. picked them up right out yep, the table. We needed new cards. Done. And we were in a country that had Walmart. So we could just go to Bicycle. Walmart. And, <laughs> and boy, those are the most expensive cards I think I've ever bought were those Walmart cards in Costa Rica. It was a Costa... No, Mexico. Mexico. In Mexico. Um, and so since then, now that we've been home, I bought a 16-pack from Costco. We'll take a few <laughs> decades. cards for life. <laughs> right, right. Um, so one day you did uh, a tour of three uh, C-notes? Cenotes. 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 Which is a sinkhole uh, under the earth with fresh water. So there's a whole series of fresh water uh, lakes and rivers that run under the peninsula or under Mexico um, between two oceans. I believe there's thousands. Thousands. Yeah. 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 Thousands. And and many have been created into something that has tourists stairs. Can come and, to. Tourists. Yeah. Some have not yeah. even been discovered yet. Yeah. Uh, some are on private property and people own them and no one will ever get to use them. Right. And then there was a day where I just, uh, again, in one of those groups that we were part of in Mexico, I found that somebody owned a cenote on their property and were renting it privately for the day. And so I was thinking maybe I'll get a couple of other people I don't know together, but yeah. never really connected. But for a hundred bucks, you got the snow to yourself for the day. Which and, is, and I'm pretty sure that's the one. No, there. that's definitely not the one. That's mm. probably a me picture. Um, no, oh no, it's definitely not the one. Uh oh. Okay. I think, I think that's one. No. No. Anyway. We went to many. Many. They're yeah, but actually... that, that was the one when we went for a drive, and then we went to the three different ones, and they had the train. Oh yeah. That was pulled by the donkey. Yes. yes. Train cars pulled by. <laughs> I have creeped you so hard. Um, that, which it looked awesome, right? So it's yeah. basically a wagon on tracks, yeah. donkey powered. Yeah. Yep. And those are really one of my favorite things about Mexico is the cenotes because they're very mysterious. They're even a little scary sometimes. Some have so, fish, some don't. Yeah. Sometimes you get nibbled by fish for real. Most yeah. times they're pretty brisk because it's fresh water. Yeah. Right. Yeah. They're, they're and like some of them, like as I say, like like tunnels and like walkways that they've added. And, yeah. And it's very cool. Yeah. Very but, interesting. Uh, yeah. And you just go and you just soak and kind of sit there. And, yeah. A few years ago, I went to Mexico by myself. Um, and I went to a cenote with a, a guide. And we went underwater through the caves and came up so you had to go underwater to get in yeah like and part i, mean, I can hardly do that at the holiday inn in peterborough where you go under the wall <laughs> <laughs> yeah they're like from the bottom of the and yep. they're like don't touch the roof you're the guy that's cause... watching a movie when somebody dies on you're doing the <gasps> <laughs> you're saying they're holding your breath oh. to see if you can do it <laughs> yeah yeah it was it was a challenge for me but that's what i like about a traveling period and traveling alone too and you know so there's a couple snow days where they had like cliffs and there's people jumping off i'm like well i'm here yeah i'm, I'm not gonna not do it yeah yeah if you now was and again could be later some of them would have that swing rope too i assume yeah. yes or no yeah, is that maybe somewhere I think, else i don't know that we ever actually got to one with a swing rope that we used i don't recall ever doing that might have been at one of the falls Very i looked at a lot of pictures yeah mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah um, i do remember us seeing one at one place and donna wouldn't let me she said that does not look safe it's fine. We wow. did the we did the one in Jamaica mm -hmm. that everyone does, and it's like they give you a set of gloves. You go up, you swing out, and I'm like, and you hit the water, and you come up, and you're like, I'm alive. And you swim as fast as you can to the edge before the next guy comes and hits you in the head. I feel like those are not built for Brian size people. <laughs> you know what? It's funny as uh, we were both skinny guys. Yeah. Both tall. I mean, I showed Don pictures of myself from high school. And, you yeah. know, most of high school is about 160, 165 pounds. Yeah. I was all Adam's apple. <laughs> <laughs> I say, I've always said that we've uh, definitely, and you as well, we've both grown into our head. Uh, <laughs> yeah. I, I was all noggin. All noggin. Yeah. Uh, I don't know why they called you egg. <laughs> yeah. It's funny, too, because then as I stopped, sha as I started shaving my head, I'm like, it was all the hair's fault. <laughs> my head is perfectly like Symmetrical. anatomically correct and now that we have jowls yeah uh yeah evens it all out but uh yeah funny stuff uh that's uh that's, the cop story. that's 100 pesos in your hand mm, 
That's a few thousand. A few thousand days will be able to pay, yeah. I laughed so, all at the so hard when you posted this. And I'm like, you dumbass. I don't believe totally, this is my fault whatsoever. Totally not our fault. No. So we picked up our rental car in Cancun at the airport at budget. Very reliable company. Yes. Yeah. And I actually rented them on points. So, you know, I had extra insurance and, you know, all those things. They gave us a car that didn't have plates on it. And so Brian had said, like, there's no plates. And he said, it's okay. You don't have to have plates in this area. Um, there's a registration on the back window of the car. Rentals Great. don't need plates here. Oh, okay. okay. I'm not from Mexico. I don't know these things. But, and there he was says, a registration. There's a, there's a registration back. Yeah. We're good. Yeah. All right. So they. Off we go. They knew where we were staying. Um, because you have, to, you have to give them yep. your address and everything. And we were driving six hours north. Uh, to the very tip of the Yucatan hours, yeah. Peninsula, yeah, and um, everything was fine. Everything was fine, and then we stayed for a couple of weeks. Yeah, everything was week, yeah. two weeks. Two everything weeks. was fine. We decided to take a day trip to uh, Vero de, uh, Bio, Bio de Lead. Bio de Lead. High five. You I said remember high. the name. <laughs> we went to Bio de Lead, which is more central in the country, uh, in that part of the country. Yeah, and it was three hours away, four hours away. From Cancun, yeah, about four. No, I meant from where we were oh, staying. Yeah, three or four hours. We spent a couple of days there. We did some sightseeing at churches around yeah. and architecture. Found the cenote in Found dead the... center of the town. Yeah, which was really cool. Yeah. It's one of the cheapest cenotes around. It cost with the exchange maybe a buck and a half. That was the one where he was jumping off the cliffs. Yeah, and yeah, and there was other people. Saw there. some nice was... restaurants there. Some nice yeah. churches. Yeah, really nice area. We go to leave, and just as we're pulling out of town, and kind of like turn on turn onto the main road. There is a police stop. They're everywhere. It's like a police check, yeah, like a <laughs> checkpoint. And they just do that all the time. They just randomly take a look in. Some some people they let through. Some people they'll ding for whatever. So the police officer said to us, um, you don't have any plates. And I'm like, um, we were told we didn't need plates. We picked up the car in Cancun. He said, well, in this part of the... There's a sticker in the back window. <laughs> We've got the sticker. We're and, good. And he said, well, in this part... In this province, in this part of the country, you need to have one. That's only for Cancun. And it's like, oh, well, they knew where we were staying. So that's where I said, he told us the registration on the back window would be fine. So he goes to look at the register. And of course, the, he doesn't speak English. And I have very, very, very limited Spanish. Like and of very course, little. that moment, we're having trouble getting a signal. Right. To translate. So he looked at the registration on the back of the car and it was expired. So we had rented this car for a month. It expired like five days after we got the car. So finally end up, we sat on the side of the road. The cop would not let us leave. We sat on the side of the road for about an hour mm -hmm. and finally got a hold of someone. With at, a machine gun. Yeah. <laughs> finally got a hold of someone yeah, at, budget, uh, at the location. And <clears throat> I said, you talk to the cop because I couldn't. Um, he talked to the police. They gave me back the phone. He said, okay, here's what you're going to do. You're going to put 5,000 pesos in your hand, and you're going to... I think it was 500. No, it was 5,000. Okay. It was a lot. Okay. That could be wrong. <laughs> no. 5,000 makes a better story. Yes. <laughs> 50,000. <laughs> so he told me to um, to give it to the cop, to pay off the cop, and that then once they let us go, we were to drive back to Valladolid, where we had originally started and um, wait four hours wait four hours they're going to bring us another car with a license plate with a license plate and five thousand pesos yes they would cover that nice yes however i get out the car to give the money to the cop and he whoa whoa, whoa, whoa no, 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 no 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 come show me something in the trunk he says there's a traffic cam up there that can see it he needs to be hidden right had to open the trunk give him the money and then he let us go so we drove back so all they were looking for the whole time was yeah. just to shake right. down yeah. and they do it to tourists all the time yeah. but, but they had a reason yep and so we got a much bigger car <laughs> much shinier nicer <laughs> much shinier SUV. And newer. yeah they uh it wasn't the end of the disaster that is budget rent car in cancun but um <laughs> yeah that was that fun story well i'm glad it wasn't your fault I didn't think it was my fault. I thought I did my due diligence. Where's, where's the, the license plate? Oh, you don't need that. Okay, what do I know? That um, really, I don't live here. really, the whole, that whole thing really turned me off, I have to say. <laughs> Crazy. Yeah. And it's like, we've traveled, and it's like, do we want to rent a moped, or do we want to rent a car, or do we just want to use public transit? Michelle's always been, let's just use public transit. 
I don't care if I'm sitting beside some lady holding a chicken. I'm it okay was, with that. It was really great to have a car in Costa Rica. It was really great to have a car in because, Mexico because we could go up the mountains and go it's not like you're gonna, hit, yeah. In the and, first place, and in Mexico, that. it was really beneficial to have a car because we were staying kind of off the beaten path. And if we wanted to get anywhere and do anything, we had to drive. And we stayed uh, in a small beach town that wasn't really close to anything. It was a 10 minute drive to the market, a 10 minute drive, like it was a 10 minute drive anywhere. And there was no public transit there. Uh, But we had a two bedroom house on 100 feet from the ocean with an outdoor pool, a palapa, an outdoor bar, barbecue, Wi Fi. The Mexico setup looked sweet. And that was like a thousand bucks for the month. Do you complain? Right? We just and they had a pool guy come by once a week and a cleaning lady come by once a week. And we so, played cards like mad. So you in would, that backyard. You would find that through like Airbnb or through mm-hmm. some other sort of I, that particular one. I don't remember that. the first ones. I think were Airbnb. I think that one she found something in a group where somebody mentioned had it. mentioned it. Yeah, and you got to con- contact him. Yeah. Our first place that we stayed in Costa Rica was a disaster. It was a filthy pit. We were there for one night. We were there for one night. I went back to Airbnb and got our money back. And through the groups that we had talked to, literally, what, 10 feet down the street, we went to we went and found another place. Because Costa Rica, the shithole was where single beds. No. And your feet got eaten up. Where was that? Oh, Sri Lanka. Sri Lanka. Sri Lanka. And yeah. then you upgraded and got the king-sized. And we went to a different air, place. Different place yeah. altogether. Yeah, yeah. 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 This was like. And what we learned was that in Costa Rica, um, the people who own these these Airbnbs, they can choose which reviews to put on their site. So, they so if somebody just, leaves a bad review, they can choose to not post it. Because I said, how the hell does this have a nine, you know, nine out of ten? It was filthy and it was a shithole. And I was so in shock. And then the woman who rented to us. Uh, it was a Canadian that owned the condo, and the woman next door was American, but was living there with her partner. And she was managing the place basically yeah, for the right. other guy. Yeah, and that was the such a great place. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and we had people to talk to, and right. Yeah, Mexico. Uh, uh, we're a little too Tanzania. soon. We're gonna, yeah. Oh, was that Tanzania? That's Tanzania. All right, we'll come back to those. Okay. See, I just figured it was uh, cats in Egypt. Oh, <laughs> cats are all over the place. So that is the end of that in Mexico. So then next stop is Egypt. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, so we were in Mexico. Again, Don's on a lot of these talk groups. Um, and this guy's posting pictures in Egypt. And he says, you know, he's, he's one of 10 people. He's at the pyramids right now. He's one of 10 people that are there today. And he's taking pictures and there's nobody in the background. And we're like, how do we get there? And so let's start looking into this and make this happen. And three weeks later, we're in Egypt. I mean, it, it wasn't like 10 people. Maybe there was 200. Right. But usually there's 50,000. Right. And that's, uh, you look at some of the pictures and there's nobody. It's you guys in the picture. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So. And, and Don will tell you more in detail, but we, uh, one of the first days we got there, we went to go to the Egypt Museum. And, you know, there's 150 guys saying, I need a tour guide, I need a tour guide. And we're like, no, it's the museum. Everything says what it is. You don't really need a tour guide. Mm -hmm. And so we're walking around. There are tour guides running around. And there's guys going, okay, now they're here. And people are like, oh, and they're running to try and keep up to these guys. And off they go. And Don says, there's some things I want to see here. And I want to get a tour guide. But I don't want a guy. Because these guys are very aggressive. And that's just the way they are out there. And they're not, they're, let's get this done so I can get back out there and grab another group. Right. So Don went on to one of her groups in Egypt and found uh, a female. I asked I asked everybody in the group, I'm looking for a female tour guide in Egypt, in Cairo. And I got some a couple of options and contacted this lady and she was amazing. So I wanted to ask questions and I wanted to learn. And I just one, I'm a woman and in that culture, women are not why are you asking really, me questions? Right. And they're not respected for their opinion or. Let's put know. it this way. We could go into a dress shop. Maybe, sir, how are you? What can I get for you today? I said, I promise you there's nothing you can get for me today, but maybe my wife. Yeah. <laughs> what is she, what is she looking for? Why don't you ask her? Yeah. <laughs> it's I had, okay. I, I had a hard time with, because I'm educated, because I, you know, senior management in my job, I'm used to 
being confident and out there and, you know, communicating. And it was really hard for me because no one spoke to me. No one looked at me. No one, you know, so I wanted a woman to give us the information. And she was. So, so we great. contacted her and she said, what is it you want to see? And we gave her a list of five things. We wanted Let's to go say, to Coptic Cairo. We wanted to see the, the, the. Um, the Tomb of the Kings. Oh, uh, yeah. We want, we wanted to see as much as possible. These are the yeah. things we want to see. And she said, how about a couple of these things? And we said, okay, well, that one and that one, not the other one. And she said, okay, it'll take about three days to see all those things you want to see and to see them properly. Okay. How much do you want? This much. Don says, how about this much? She said, okay. And I think it was $300 US yeah, for, for three, three days, days included <clears throat> our transportation. Anywhere we went, the driver, she'd text the guy or call the guy. He'd pull right up, pick us up, take us to the next place, drop us off, go wherever. Yep. Uh, it included our lunches every day. And she'd take us to an authentic Egyptian restaurant and included our entry to all of these places. Which are quite expensive, but she would have been able to get us in bec- uh, like as a local price. Probably, right. And right? the best thing is to be a tour guide in Egypt, you need to have a, a degree from the university in Egyptology. There you go. She's very educated. Well-versed. And... She, everywhere, like every religion she knew about, to the temples, to the churches, to everything. It was fantastic. She was amazing. Yeah. Learned so it's, much. That... It's so interesting, right? Mm-hmm. And uh, that was like um, Marco Maddie's sister was in Dubai for a mm-hmm. while. And same thing, right? They had a lovely time, did all kinds of cool stuff. And then I guess it would have been they came home when the last financial crisis, right? The sub, um, yeah, the subprime mortgage thing. And they're mm-hmm. like, let's get out of here. Cause they cut people's hands off. If you go into debt in Dubai, mm-hmm. <laughs> but, and she was, and we talked to her and right. And he's very much into finance and stuff. And right. And she's like, eh, it's okay. It's beautiful, but right. Same thing. Mm-hmm. So what, what I learned from Egypt was it's a beautiful country. These are things. And again, we went in a time when, we didn't have to wait in line. We didn't have to fight through crowds. We could get beautiful pictures. We could touch stuff. We went down into King's tombs that were 4,000 4, years. years old and were the only ones down in there. And you can really stand there and enjoy it and take it all in. And no one's pushing you. And no one's pushing let's you go, and yelling go. at you. And overall, the country, it's dirty. It's rude. There's not much else to see other than those things. Yep. Once you've seen those things, it's, to me, it's like going to Paris. Well, you're in Paris. you got to see the Eiffel Tower, right? Yeah. So you go there. You see these things. You've been there. You're there for a couple of weeks. You see all the things you want to see. Now we're like, all right, let's go to, uh, we got some time to kill. Let's go to uh, an all-inclusive. We went to the Red Sea and stayed in an all-inclusive. And that's where we ran into all the Kazakhstanians. Right. Which <laughs> Dance. apparently is a real country. Borat didn't make it up. Right. Dance party. <laughs> Dance party. I believe there's a photo. Of that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and no, I uh, think I, I think I might have sent you it's the third picture down. Third picture down. That one. That just shows it's empty. Yeah. That's him. I digging. took a, I took a bunch of pictures he of her taking a picture pictures. Of me taking a picture, <laughs> and it's empty. That's yeah. four thousand year old tomb. I couldn't get over how bright some of the colors still were. <sighs> to me, I mean the, that picture doesn't do it justice. The I'm picture of the it. hallway. I'm like, there's no, there's no lights in that. Is there? Uh, no. They must be lit up. No, it's got to be lit up. Yeah, probably it's there, there a little bit. But, but the color is real. Yeah, they they haven't touched anything up. Yeah. To me, that was so vibrant, mm-hmm. and that right. It's a and by the way, so Don sent me some photos, and then I have creeped some photos that just caught my eye out of uh, out of your adventure. So this is one that I picked because it was just exactly that, right? It and just the tour guide. She's explained to you all the pictures, what they mean. And what you know, who would have been buried here? She's and, breaking down the hydro- hy- yeah. hieroglyphics. Thank you. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, it was interesting stuff, man. And, and that was in Luxor outdoor. Um, again, temples. It's it, it's everywhere. like the movies. Yeah, it's, it's exactly what and, you're and expecting to see. They actually find huge. these things in pieces. And they're trying and to put they them back put together. Them back together as best they can. It's amazing. Some of it's still attached. They, yeah, but they had a whole yeah. field just of pieces. Yeah. Trying to figure out where and it's going to go. And they're trying to. Like a generational project. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Absolutely. And they got cranes in there. And, you know, we're walking through all the pieces, just kind of looking at the pieces. And we come across this building and a guy does the. I'm like, oh, another drug dealer. Phenomenal. He pulls me over. He goes, come here. I want to show you something. And he unlocks a door and takes you into a room that nobody's supposed to see. And then, of course, as you're leaving. <laughs> it's not like I could get fired. Yeah. Sure you could. Yeah. <laughs> you, you didn't solve any puzzle pieces while you're there. You'd be like that one no, to that one. No. I see you. I have, got a piece. I see you have that camel picture. I do. Why would I not have you guys on a camel? Poor camel. 
Um, <laughs> comfy to ride. So again, I have a bad back. Yes, and this is you know you got to go with it. My back's not going, and every step I'm going, I want to die. This is horrible. And so we go, and our tour guide knows one of the guys that owns the camels, or works for a guy that owns the camels, and he she tells me we're just going to go up on and take your picture. I'm like, cool. So we take a couple of pictures. Then he wants to start walking. He's like, this is how much it's going to be. I'm like, I'm not interested. Don's like, I really want to do this. Get me off. And now and Don's like, I really want to do this. And I said, oh, fine. Here's the money. But I don't want to. No, no, you got to stay on. I don't want to. I literally halfway, to, get me off. I'll just walk. And they're like, no, it's okay. <laughs> no. Uh, and I loved it. Yeah. It was like riding a but, horse. Yeah, and so you... the other thing is I'm yeah. sitting on doing the. See, they're, like, I... they're like, you got to relax. I'm like, if I relax anymore, I'll be on the ground. <laughs> 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 that's my that's my plan with animals. You need to relax. They can feel your fear. I'm yeah. like, I am afraid. I'm, I'm glad it knows I'm scared. I wasn't afraid. I just yeah, I couldn't. No, you know, it just felt like I was falling off yeah. unless I gripped with my yeah, thighs, yeah, yeah. and then the thighs are starting to shake. They're not used to that kind of action. <laughs> <laughs> I loved it. I thought it was fantastic. And that's all that matters, right? <laughs> you got her. That is quite right. As you said, right. Beautiful skyline. So that's Luxor, I believe. Um, that was the view from our, uh, yeah, like our twenty-five dollar a week hotel with the restaurant on the roof. Yes, it, awesome, amazing. And Love I found that, that and I found that place through blogs. Super small room. It's a bed, a TV on a cart that doesn't work, and a teeny tiny little bathroom. And a teeny tiny little bathroom. And uh, really, what else do you need? You're only staying there for a week. And you're not planning on staying in the room anyway. No. And you go up. We're already on the top floor, which was like four or five floors. You go to the no uh, amazing rooftop restaurant, amazing views. Came uh, with breakfast for twenty five dollars for a week. It was amazing. Yeah, phenomenal. But some of the things you talked about, the deals. Do you think when things get back to normal, the pricing will? Is that pricing always that way, there or do always, you think always deals to be found? Right. Um. That hotel has always been cheap. So it's not one of the fancy hotels. No, we're on the fifth floor. There's no elevator. Right. Yeah. But it's right in the middle of everything. Right. Markets are all around you. Towns all around you. You can go. There was a temple that we could see from. We walked over to the the temple and checked it out. There's horse carriages right up right if they want to go. We took a horse carriage ride to that ruins that we we showed you there. We took the Ferrari. He he said it's it's a Ferrari. Get in. I have a Ferrari. One horsepower. His English was great. <laughs> he was so. I mean, cute, that's though. his shtick. Probably yeah. oh, like yeah. sixteen. Right, that's yeah. his shtick. He's that's working full time. He's that's yeah. his job, and his little brother is there helping. Right. Yeah. But so markets. That's um, the market in Egypt, the main in Cairo. I can't remember what it's called. Off the top that's okay. And just all the typical stuff. And if you look at those pictures, you'll see there's no women anywhere. Who's you? Besides me. All men. All men. Man, so men work in the shops. Men work in the restaurants. Only seven men. years ago was it legal for a woman to work at all. So you might have seen a woman with maybe some groceries. Right. But that's not really a grocery area. That's so not a real a, progressive country. No. And it's interesting because we posted a lot of these pictures and some of my girlfriends had come back and said, there's no women anywhere. Oh. It's like, yeah, you're right. There's no now, women anywhere. Would you travel there as a woman by yourself? I don't think you felt unsafe. I never felt unsafe. It, and there's other just places. the just the level of service for you would person, gain for the person that I am. I'd say fuck yeah, I would go again by myself and I would slay it. However, uh, interest wise, I probably would say no. But now here's the other thing, and and this those comments when you pray, um, put up a few of the marketplace pictures. Mm-hmm. You're like so much to buy. Yeah, we never buy. We don't have a home. Exactly. Yes. So did you buy nothing? Meh. I got a couple I, bracelets, maybe. Charge I got I got some tacky Cuban pictures in my bathroom, and it's like, why did I buy those? And but right about them because they were at the market. And he's like, you buy, you buy. And again, in our rubber made bin, we have a couple things from our travels. That yeah, we've, we've kept not from this traveling, but from traveling before this time. We'd really we're like, meh. It's the memories. It's and the that's pictures. so fantastic to be able to walk around a market and just enjoy the sights yeah. and not go, oh, I should buy that because it'll look good on that wall or it'll look good because. Yeah. No, and, right. I, and there's it's no very room. In, there is no room in our luggage. No. Honest, unless we bought another bag. Because then, right, you're going. They were, I, they were stuffed. Yeah. It was really hard for me because I love 
that it almost of... got to the point where she'd be like oh i really want to buy the scarf what could i throw out every and that's along the way it was like okay i'm gonna buy something i have to get rid of something but i love yeah pretty things like pictures and, girl. and lamps and like i love yep. those kinds of things and our house was always full with things from our travels and stuff so it was very hard for me to go it's so pretty but i don't need it yeah. well that's when we tended to travel like but you save so much money that you, way, right? you know you're like okay we're gonna take shitty flip-flops we're gonna go to old navy everyone's getting new flip-flops and then we're leaving them there and they'll be like you know, we're going to run into the housekeeper and we're going to be like, you want flip-flops at the end of the week? And she'll be like, yeah. Whether she wants them or not, she'll sell them. Yeah. yeah. I don't care what you do with them. Mm, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. And she's like, uh, and the, it's like everything. And I never came to the realization that the, the availability of, you know, Tylenol, Pepto. Yep. And they're like, uh, if you have like your, your medicine, when you're done with, if you're not taking it, toothpaste, pantyhose, all, like all, all your travel stuff, I'm happy. If you leave it, I will take it. Yeah. And like, oh. they, almost considered a tip sometimes yeah and i was like oh cool i like bucanero not <laughs> <laughs> not uh yeah, yeah, yeah. Cristal. i actually probably got that wrong i probably like Cristal more than Bucanero. I like better, yeah, yeah you're quite correct bucanero bucanero and then they're like oh i understand and then there's no bucanero in the fridge for the rest of the week and yeah. you're like super <laughs> give the bartender a canadian hat all of a sudden he finds the stuff on the top job my guy. Oh yeah. This was the only man who paid attention to me our entire time in Egypt. And guess where that is? Do you see the background? Is it beer? Yep. It's beer. That's so like, uh, it's very hard to find alcohol in Egypt. because it's a Muslim country, right? Um, but Egypt is also a very Christian co- uh, country as well. Um, but there, if you want to buy alcohol, you have to go to. Was it our Ferrari that stopped there? I think our Ferrari took us there, yeah. our one-horse Ferrari. So we stopped there, and there's a window, and the guy opens it up, and there's a guy. But just off to the side, that's where the storage room is, and he's just sitting there. I was sitting in the carriage, yeah. and he just and he waved at me, and I smiled at him. Most countries you go to, there's no store to go into shop. It's you go up to the window, and you tell them what you want. But when you don't know what they have... No. And you can't uh, speak the language. Beer, what the... Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So I had to take his picture, because he just... I, I love people and he waved know? at her and i don't think any guy gave her the yeah, time of nobody day. time of day it was the only person who paid attention Isn't it so to interesting yeah. i think he was flirting but probably <laughs> he's got game yeah, look at him he does, yeah. he's been around forever yeah. yeah he knows what he's doing that's right now is this that is in the market in egypt there are cats everywhere, everywhere. and i right and obviously in egypt cats mean so much more than here yes so what they what i was told by our tour guide and others in the country was that a cat can sense a good person so um people of muslim faith like to have cats around because they can see who's a good person who's not i love cats and they love me and i was gonna say so excited i do not like cats i'm not a big fan and they like me because they know i'm allergic and Uh, they know i'll be miserable at the end of the night they're like oh the cat really likes you i'm like i know I made cat friends everywhere. Oh, good. And then I thought this was a fun one, too. So this is a little restaurant you Pushery. found. Pushery. Um, <laughs> so, I thought that was awesome. That yeah. you kind of. I'll let uh, Don explain this food. So koshery is kind of the national dish of Egypt. Um, it is a very strange combination of food from a North American perspective. Um, it's rice. It's uh, a very thin type of noodle plus spaghetti, plus lentils, plus fried onions, chickpeas, chickpeas, uh, and then a tomato sauce, a hot tomato sauce, a hot tomato sauce, and um, garlic vinegar, garlic vinegar, and, and hot sauce, and hot sauce, and they bring the bowl of all the carbs <laughs> to your table, and then they pour all the stuff on for you, and you eat. It's a big bowl of carbs. I, I kind of liken it to there was probably a point in time where there this was leftovers and they didn't want to, you know, they were poor people. So you figured out what to do yeah, with it. This is something they created out of what they had. And it's now. We went and there so at 11 o'clock at night. Uh, there was three levels and it was packed. And all they sell is kosher. That's all they sell. Small and or rice large. pudding and right. rice pudding. That's it. You want small, you want large. And you were saying this is like uh, down an automotive yeah, it was. Oh, yeah, we right. walking down the street, and every it's just car shop, car shop, car shop, car shop, and then boom, this monstrosity. <laughs> all lit and up. every guy on that street eats there. 
maybe, mm-hmm. but there was actually it was all it was walks cold. of life full, all some dressed up, some not, and it was dirt cheap. And they welcomed us like, "Hello, welcome. the, we walk in." The owner says, "Hello, is this you? My first time? Where are you from?" And this is the best when you're traveling. Are you American? No, I'm Canadian. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> they, they feel like they just insulted you by oh, calling, you an, calling you an American. Yeah, a lot of them. <laughs> he wanted to sit. Here, come, 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 sit with me. We eat. No, no, it's okay. It's okay. We'll go get our own table. And the server, such a nice guy, is all dressed up. And he says, hello, have you been before? I said, no. He said, oh, I look after you. How much do you want to eat? Small, large? It's not. A... And he comes and he puts it down. He explains everything that's in it. And then he goes, well, look at this. And then you put this on. And then you put it this. Do you like garlic? More garlic for you then. Do you like it spicy? A little. Like, good? Okay. And then you like this. And then you enjoy. <laughs> there you go. And I could eat that. Every month, like every other woman. <laughs> it's a bowl of carbs. Yeah. <laughs> and the rice pudding was pretty fantastic, mm-hmm. too. We went a couple times, didn't we? Yeah, we went twice. I think you'd also post a picture, lots of security. Yes. In yes. Egypt? Yeah. Yes. yes. So metal detector. So Even our... to go into a restaurant, metal detectors yeah. and the security guard. Our hotel. They have bombing issues. Right. Well, no. In that area. So our hotel was at Tahrir Square, yep. where the Arab Spring was. Yep. So literally right across the street. So everything in that area was very high security. It was ve- very safe, except for the people that drive. <laughs> I've never seen driving like that in my life. It's, it's hilarious. It's the scariest thing you've so ever seen. Let's picture your downtown Toronto. It's probably just as wide. But usually it's a lot of one-way streets. There's sometimes they're both ways. But there's no lines on the road anywhere. So you choose so where. You, so you figure there's two going this way and there's two going that way, but sometimes there's three and three, and sometimes there's a fourth, and like every car's got scratches and dings on it, and nobody signals. They only use the horn, horn. and everybody just crosses the street. But most people don't even look; they just step off the curb and start walking and let the cars deal with it. It was frightening, but kind of cool, <laughs> <laughs> right? I mean, it's funny because right in North America, I feel like we're the only people that don't drive with our horn. Yes. Right? And you go somewhere yep. else and you're like, am I in Absolutely. trouble? When something's happening, you hit the horn. But them, it's, I'm turning left. I'm here. I'm turning right. Yeah. Here I am. Yep. I'm behind you. It's I'm an announcement. You. I'm going yes. past yeah, you. Yeah, 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 yeah. So we're at that hotel and the pool was on the 10th floor and all fenced in. So downtown, it was a nice little place. You could not relax in this pool at all. It was horrible. <laughs> it was nice to have a pool in the middle of the city, but. I also enjoyed. Um, as you guys were deciding where you were going, the uh, the little quizzes of partial maps. I enjoyed that. That was fun. <laughs> was it just the flag or the map? I think I did. The I think flag. the flag. You're right. Yeah, it'd be like the corner. No, I like, think I did the whole flag. That's not an easy flag to remember to know. It's yeah. probably. Yeah. It was the hardest one to find on Google. Was it? I think so because I think I searched Zanzibar. Which actually isn't. Which is now an island within the country. Yes, yes. and then uh, they're like, Tanzania. "Do you do you mean Tanzania?" And yeah. I'm like, Ooh. "They used to be separate countries. Now they're one country. So now Zanzibar is an island within Tanzania." But you There's still you still have to you. go through um, customs when you go from the mainland to the island. So you there's a ferry. When you take the ferry, you have to go through customs. Yeah. And you have to show your yellow card vaccine passport every time you go into the country to show that you got the yellow fever right if you way have, back in the day yeah if you don't have the yellow fever vaccination which we got ahead of time we actually got a bunch of vaccines before we left we went to a travel vaccine clinic and so these are some of the places we think we might be going to and she said here's a list of what you should get and we got them all except for one because it was outrageously expensive but malaria because malaria you need to take a pill every single day and we didn't know when we would be in a malaria country Hmm. And it's not necessary. You would think, and it was expensive. Yeah, malaria is everywhere. The most you think... expensive shot we got was the uh, what do you call rabies? It? Rabies shot, seven hundred dollars each. But I got bit by a dog in Sri Lanka, and now she explains to me. I said, "Well, we'll just stay away from the monkeys." She said, "Well, there's stray cats and dogs there." I said, "Oh, we better get them." Then my wife will pet every cat and dog she sees. <laughs> there you go. I would not have thought of that. Dear Lord. Yeah, and there's no cure for rabies. You have it for life. No, you I thought you took it. like a ton of don't you, you like t- back in the day. That's what my parents would be like. If you get rabies, they're going to stick like a hundred needles in your abdomen. There is no cure for it, and you will die. Period. So it will it will be gone from your body when you're dead, and it <sighs> will kill you. So they just treat it. They just treat it as best they can. Yes. 
So that's why we got the shots. Thankfully, they said that the dog she got bit by uh, was um, vaccinated. vaccinated anyway, but who knows? Yeah. You Their know English that. was very terrible. And, yeah. Good you know. dog. Good dog. But he did say papers, 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 meaning the dog had papers, had vaccinated. And it wasn't Australia that she got bit by. Yeah. Surprisingly. And I wasn't petting him. He came to me. <laughs> Knew you're a cat person. Yeah. Probably. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely. Could smell it on you. Kind of bite right. that one. Um, so trip from Egypt to Tanzania, pretty simple. Just flew Stopped south. in Addis Ababa, Ethiopia. Um, that that airport had like dirty. beds you could lay out on. That was the first time we ever saw uh, loungers that you could lay lay down on and recline. I've never seen that in an airport before. And I've been and in some nice airports. Yeah. another after another after yeah. another after another after Turns another. out a lot of airports have those, just not in North America. That I've seen anyway. I'm yeah. sure there are somewhere. It's funny, right? And that's as you get abroad, you're like, we're missing out on stuff. Yeah. And, you know, you go into these places like Tanzania, you have to have your mask on. But to go to Tanzania, you didn't have to be back. You didn't have to uh, get a COVID test. That was kind of why we chose Tanzania because. No, we there... did. Because we no, had, we no. went to pay, we paid for a clinic in Mexico. No. Oh, we... because for Egypt. Oh, for Egypt. When we went from Egypt to Tanzania. Sorry, you're right. Yeah, Egypt. There was no. That seems to be a recurring... Um... She's, she's right? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I get that a lot. Um, <laughs> when we got there, we realized the, the, is it the prime minister, the president... Yeah, so the leader of their country has decided... I remember this post. Yeah, decided that they are good, God-fearing people, and God will not allow COVID to strike them down. Hallelujah. So there is no COVID there's in Tanzania, no COVID. Right, if you talk there's, to him. Even beyond that, so there's no COVID, there's no testing... There is no uh, precaution. There is nothing. And they didn't um, buy any vaccines because God save it. Because God, they don't have COVID. Why would you need to spend any of that money if rule number one, you don't need two, three, four? We, I I think we probably didn't think we would stay very long, but it was, it was again with. Egypt, we moved around a lot, so it was a very, like, here to here to here to here. We kind of wanted somewhere that we could easily go to without having to jump through all the hoops. Didn't have to take a test yeah. within a certain amount of time. And, and when we we're, we're, when we landed, we had our own, like, the airport was a little bit crazy. And it's, you land on the runway, you walk to the thing, and you're just, now you're all packed in like animals. And here's a form for you to fill out, which they could have given you on the plane, but they didn't. So now we're all trying to figure out where can we fill these things out. And then we go get in this line. And then we got to pay for what to enter the country. Here's some money that we didn't know we had to pay. And and then, you know, we get our luggage. And we've got this guy. He's waiting for us. He's taking us to our hotel. Fantastic. We plan for this ahead of time. It's just us in the vehicle. We still got our masks on. We drive an hour, two hours to wherever. And the hotel. We stayed at a, how do you describe it? Like a lodge? Not even a lodge. Mm, it, the place like was called eco- Prom- it was called Promised Land. It had a bunch of different buildings. This is the treehouse? Yeah, and a bar. No, not the treehouse. No, not the treehouse, and a bar. Yeah. And so he, the guy grabs our luggage in the wheelbarrow and comes walking down with our luggage and dumps it at the uh, the bar. And he says, there you go. And the bartender is also the guy in charge of checking you in. And It was like being in a commune. Like, it was it very... Felt very Jamaican, too. Yes. Very, no problem, man. Akuna Matata. They Just... say that in Africa. Akuna Matata. Akuna you know, Matata. What? But We're... it means no problem, not no worries. No problem. <laughs> yes, that was there. So yeah, you're right. It felt very. It was seaside or oceanside. It was probably my favorite place in Tanzania. Great place for sure. Um, different. I mean, you come down for breakfast. You want? Uh, how do you want your eggs? Okay, they bring you out breakfast. It is what it is. This is your breakfast. You get a little bit of. Some fruit, lots of fruit in a lot of these places. Breakfast filled with fruits and toast, maybe an egg. Um, and then for lunch, they come around an hour, two hours before. Here's your menu. What would you like? Okay, I want this. She wants that. Um, first meal there. Nice. They said, okay, what time? Uh, what time's dinner? Seven. Okay. We go over at seven. We sit down. Watching the server walk around. There's only like 12, 15 tables. Very spread out. Perfect. Server never comes over, says hello. Now they're like a half an hour. Still don't even have a drink. Mm-hmm. All right, we'll go over to the bar. I'll grab a couple of drinks. I'll come back because it's only like 100 feet away. I come back with the drinks. We've been there about an hour and 20 minutes now. Here's your dinner. Awesome. We ordered an appetizer as well. well let me check on that. Never mind. <laughs> We're good. Find out later that uh, 
I'm like, well, okay, well, we didn't get dinner till like 8.20. So next day, I think, what time's dinner? Seven. Oh, okay. We show up at 7.45. We get our dinner at like 8.15. Every night, we just kind of showed up later and later and realized it was easier. Because <laughs> everything's hakuna matata. Right. Pole, pole. Pole, pole. Slowly, Slow, slowly. slowly. No rush, no rush. Oh, or you'd, you'd, you'd be Friday Friday on a it's five o'clock and you stand at the bar to wait for a you know, I'm ready for a beverage. Nobody An hour knows. later, somebody would come down. So, hey, Manu, do you want something? Sure. I'll so talk. bizarre because you'd think like that and, and serving every... the drink, getting the tip, getting But it was all going on a tab. And okay. You paid at the end of the week and then you tip. Mm, and then or, actually split. I think most uh, most of these places the gratuity was included. Mm-hmm. They'd add on like an extra 7%, 10%, right. or 5%, whatever it was. But nobody... And, it and most places, they told you, don't tip extra. And it wasn't like... Like tonight, our dinner took a long time, and I was like, oh, I'm so hungry. But here, it was almost like yeah. you just roll with it, you know? Yeah, Everything. We'll sit and enjoy the view and yeah. have a chat and have another glass of wine. We and... bring out little snacks at, at happy hour, so at least we'd had like some peanuts and chips or right. whatever. But it was like being there was so amazing so, i mean right you're on vacation yes it was like a vacation yeah. in my place yeah. yeah so chill yeah fishing gear food okay meat on a stick <laughs> so what are the white things um they would be cuttlefish or squid, squid. calamari the big white like yeah. bulbous things. Yeah. That's what a calamari. That, that's, that's got a lot cal- of yeah. calamari is actually a large tube. So when you see it, it's been cut into yes. rings. Right. They're actually large tubes. So there's shrimp there. There's octopus. The dark red stuff in the middle. Right. Octopus. We ate a ton of octopus. Mm-hmm. Almost. It was the cheap octopus and squid were the cheapest meat because it's accessible. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um. And done different ways or All, yeah. Sometimes mm-hmm. fried. Sometimes grilled. Right. You know what I find interesting? We'd be out in a boat somewhere, and I'd say, "Oh, there's a water bottle floating there." And I'd be like, "Yeah, fisherman." A minute later, you'd see a head pop up, guy with a spear. That's his boy. That's yeah. his boy to let uh, people know he's down there. Just a water bottle, and you're like two miles off the coast. And they don't have any like no flotation no device, flotation, no nothing. nothing. He's just out there with a spear fishing. And then get picked up, or he swam he out there. Swam out there. Swam, he swims yeah. back in. Fuck, I swing. Uh, I still sink too they, much. They do this every day for like hours every day. It's amazing. I would drown. They <laughs> won. What's that? Oh, his gravestone. <laughs> <laughs> oh, where Scotty was. So they have a night market in on the main. That was on the mainland, um, in Stonetown, which is kind of like their oldest city, um, on the coast, and they do uh, like a food market every night. There was a lot of people there when mm-hmm. we went that night. That was fun. It's funny because I think the comment when you were talking about there's no COVID in Zanzibar, I think that was somebody who made comment, um, the locals playing soccer on the beach. Oh, yeah. And they're like, no masks? And you're like, uh, they don't believe in COVID here. Yeah. So that was totally, and that's that was their thing, right? It was like, oh. uh, yeah, there were, that day we went with a guy. We were staying at, a, we were on the mainland at that point? Or we were still no, on the we island. We, uh, we met a guy out. from Britain. Uh, Sri Lankan guy from Britain, I think, or Scotland. In- he lived in Scotland, Scotland, but he was Indian. Indian, really nice guy. Um, he decided he, his shop had to shut down. No, it was England. It was anyway. His shop had to sh- Glasgow. Maybe you're right. His shop had to shut down. Was did I say she's right? <laughs> she's right. Um, so his shop had to shut down five times. And he says, "I might as well go travel." And this guy was making ridiculous. He was a jeweler. Right. And so off he went by himself, and he was just staying at this little boutique hotel where we're, I think it had 10 rooms, maybe. Yeah. And uh, he said, oh, I'm going into this town today. You want to come? Sure, we'll split the car with you. He walks us over, and he, I guess he'd stayed there earlier. Go ahead and sit down. We order like, some tea and something. And he says, I'm going to go play volleyball with some of the locals. I said, okay, I'll come play some volleyball. I'm out of shape and fat and haven't played in years. Let's do that. <laughs> and, you know, there's over there, there's a soccer game going on. You know, the out of bounds is the buildings and the ocean. And they, you know, down they got maybe a couple T-shirts set up for yep. goal, and there was a cow running through the middle of the pitch. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> and there was like a hundred, two hundred uh, guys kite surfing. I'd never seen that many people kite surfing in my life before. That was amazing. It was such a fun day. I don't know how they don't get tangled together. I thought the exact same thing. Like, I don't know how they don't die. <laughs> oh. <sighs> things, but there's so many things you can do that are cheap inexpensive like right other than the couple drinks we had it cost us nothing well on the ride there and back but if we were staying there you can go out there and just hang on the beach all day for free right 
you know, and, play volleyball, play soccer. And like, right. And bed yourself in the, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and you see the different um, communities within. So, you know, we had stayed at one part of the Island at promised land. And then we had stayed in another part of the Island in the boutique hotel. And, this um, day trip that we did with this guy was a different part of the island. So you kind of get to see the communities around, which is really interesting and too. One thing I learned was uh, don't ask the server what do they like to eat. So we went to a small little mom and pop shop that was down an alley. And I'm like, oh, it's really, and it's really, really <laughs> cheap. This sounds great. Don picked out something neat. So to the girl, I said, well, what do you like to eat that's here? Oh, I like to eat the, I like to eat chicken, I think. She said, no, no. Banana. No, no. Plantain. Plantain. I like the plantains. And I said, well, I don't really want plantains as a meal. You know, uh, I said, how about with some some chicken, some vegetables? She said, okay, I'll make it a soup for you. I said, oh, okay, chicken soup. And so we get the soup and it's a clear broth with a couple of slices of carrot in it, some pieces of chicken and a couple of sliced up bananas in it. Hot. Hot banana. Hot banana soup. <laughs> He ate it. Right. <laughs> That's what that dinner was dinner last that night. Yeah. And my that was it was a big bowl, it was a big helping, and my bottle of beer cost more. <laughs> yeah. You think that's really what she liked? I don't probably know. What she I, had in the kitchen. Probably yeah. she thought it was hilarious when she handed it to me. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Bring and he I ate sure the whole it was thing. I can't I believe it. <laughs> I love some. Oh. Uh, <laughs> uh, so local uh sea urchin? Starfish. 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 Uh, yeah, we took a day trip and we went, uh, they called it a sea safari or something. Blue dolphin safari. Blue dolphin safari. So we went uh, dolphin watching uh, and we went to this isle- um, sandbar for lunch. Had like a seafood lunch that he cooked. Right he barbecued there. right there. Right there. Uh, lobster tails and squid and bunch of vegetables and some octopus and we were looking at all the we found like five different ocean. colors of starfish yeah. i had no idea there was more than one color we also learned that you're not supposed to pick them up after i picked them up <sighs> i also learned that you know how you see all the white curl coral yes that's dead that's dead i didn't know that only the colorful stuff is live the white stuff is dead and that's mainly from man but we did <laughs> we did that day go snorkeling in the Indian Ocean, at a at a really nice um, best reef. places I've ever been to. It was, it was like space. It was like different world. A different world. It was so beautiful. So this little guy, is it literally as big as it is, or does it run further back? Runs much further back. That's yeah. just the front of it. Yeah, there's a full restaurant inside, and then a massive balcony on the backside. I was like. That looks small, but it's it, really it's a it's a decent it's bigger than the shop. Here. Right. Okay. Yeah. 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 It totally looks like it's like okay. <laughs> and they have like a full computer system in there, a touch screen for the servers, and they get prices weren't cheap because it's the rock. Depending on the tide is whether you got to take that. I don't know if you said there's a the little dinghy. Shop. Yeah. Depending on the tide is whether you have to take the dinghy out or not. And I think you were saying it was like up to your knees when you were at guys. When there. we went there, it was yeah, it's pretty shallow. We just walked it. We didn't bother. If you look on Instagram and you look up the Rock Tanzania or the Rock Zanzibar. Millions of people. That's like one of the most Instagrammable spots. Like the we tiki bar in Mexico. Mexico. Yeah. 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 That looks. Who cool. doesn't go to a tiki bar in Mexico? Come right. On. on Christmas Eve. On Christmas Eve and sing Christmas carols <laughs> with a Spanish accent. <laughs> <laughs> that was. Oh, that was. Cool. Okay, so that was at Promised Land Lodge. Okay. In the morning, the fishermen would bring in the fish, and so you'd come down in the morning to go have breakfast, and you see the cooler with like fish this big. like six or eight large large fish so there was a needle fish that was this big with teeth like and it's only like this big around it's just a long thin a fish and then it turns out the bones, the bones are bright are blue. Are blue. so i decided to have that for lunch we didn't know the time was going to be who knew? who knew who knew i thought that was the coolest thing ever it, right if, right mm. i don't know if any blue bone fish in, here on uh cameron lake not a clue <laughs> so good story about that boat how about you tell the story about how we so almost died? The uh, that that boat is just uh, I think there the tide is out, yeah. so it's just sitting there on the, the reef. But when the tide comes in, it's higher, deeper than my head, and it's anchored there, and it's just for people to climb on and jump off. It's just there for show. So one day we decided to go. out. The tide was starting to come in, and so we decided to go out with our masks on and do some snorkeling. And we're going out, and we're going out, and I can still stand, and I can still touch, and I can still touch. And Don's having a problem. She's like, I can't touch anymore. I'm like, Okay, I got you. 
you know, we don't have any floaties on. We got our mask and snorkel. Actually, we had one of those one piece, you know, the full mask with a, a snorkel attached. So you don't have to breathe through a tube. Right. And um, then we're like, okay, we should, Don's like, we're getting a little farther. I'm like, okay, let's start heading back in. And we start swimming. It's like four or five minutes. We're still in the same spot. I'm like, oh, geez. Dawn's starting to panic. And she takes off her mask. I'm feeling sick. Just and she shows yeah. me her mask. So now I've got her mask and I'm trying to swim. And she's swimming. And I'm getting a little tired now on my back. And I'm just kind of doing the backstroke and just kind of pushing my way in. And I'm not really moving. Getting a little tired. The legs are cramping up a bit. And now I'm hearing Dawn, help! help! I can see everybody. Oh, help! They're all out in shorts. So they're all coming to look. And a couple of the guys get a couple of canoes and come out and grab us. So enough of a riptide. A it's ri- constantly rip- just pushing you out. out. Yeah. Even though the tide's coming the in, the current's going out. Because I guess it's doing the... Yes. Right? Cycling. And they do say, like, swim... With it. With, and then you'll eventually... The yeah. Mm. But we would have ended up in a, in a cape, because it was all rock, right? There was, It wasn't like the beach. Can't was... drown in a... Like, on the rocks, on the cave. It, Maybe the cave was the better choice. Well, that was very kind that they came out and got you. It did, I yeah, was, yeah. I was, I was so mad <laughs> because I kept saying, like, I think we're too far. I think yeah. we're, too far. we're fine. We're like really far. You, no, we're good. But you got, no, we were way further past the, the boat. Way, yeah. yeah, sure. <laughs> Again, <laughs> but you know what? It was a bit of a um, eye opener. Uh, yeah, to your own, not your own mortality, but your limits. Like you have to be aware that not everything is as simple as it seems. Brandon was, or uh, Brian was a good swimmer as a kid too. Yeah, I got lots of badges and the colors. And, you know. Yep. And we're both really good swimmers, yep. but it just, you were fighting. Well, how much a, swimming do you really do at this point in your life? I right? know. I am not a good swimmer. Here's a little story for you. Um, on the vo- uh, volunteer fire department and some guy crashes his single engine off of the golf course in Sturgeon Point. 50 feet and i'm like wonder if he's still in the plane so we go we respond i'll go out i'm like oh lots of zebra muscles i'll leave my boots on steel toe perfect oh yeah they cement boots yeah walk out all of a sudden come to the conclusion that 50 feet it drops off so i swim out he's not in the boat now i'm like i'm gonna fucking drown here and it's like, I gotta swim back. Do I? Do I call for help? Do I? Or do drop I just do I drop my boots? Yeah. Or I just floated and did the back, the slowest backstroke back in. They're like, you look tired. I'm like, I'm exhausted. I'm gonna go sit in the truck. I'm no, I'm no longer involved in this call. Or I will be. I will be the call. And they're like, are you the a guy with the bad heart? Yeah. Well, oh. back then it probably wasn't so bad. It wasn't bad because it wasn't diagnosed. Exactly. You understand? What you don't know about doesn't hurt you. Hundred <laughs> um, percent. Yeah. So it's like oh, I totally get that. They're like, I'm getting tired. Oh, I'm like, I know exactly. And it's like, what do I do? What's my next choice? Yeah. Elephants. Elephants. Yeah, we hit the mainland and we did a uh, safari for three days. Yeah. Um, safaris in Africa are super expensive because uh, it's everyone Africa. goes there to do it. Yeah. Um I think there might have been a little bit of covid pricing maybe. I think it was a bit a cheaper bit. than usual. Um the best part was you could there weren't multiple people in a vehicle now because of covid, so we had our own private vehicle and our own private tour guide. And again, a guy who went to university, learned all about this stuff. Here's the difference. When we were in Sri Lanka and we went on a one day safari, the guy was like Grr! elephants. Click. Click. Grr! Oh, we're going again. All right. This guy would be like, elephants. And you'd be like, what do they eat? They eat this. They eat any question you had. And a bird would land. He'd tell you all about the bird and where the bird's from. This is, it's the national bird of this country, but it's here right now. And, and the water's this high and blah, blah, blah. And he'd tell he you. He could tell you every tree, every flower, what, everything. Let me know when you're ready to move on. Because awesome. it's just us. It's our tour. Yeah. If we want to sit here and watch. He's like, if you want to sit here and watch elephants all day, I'll sit here and watch elephants all day. Right. But there's other stuff to see if you want. Mm-hmm. Other than he didn't stay on the road. Uh, so that, yeah, that's oh. part of the story. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so he gets, he gets a call, uh, distress, not a distress call, but he gets a call from one of the other drivers. They all kind of keep in communication with each other that he's stuck. He's gone off road. And no, your driver? No, another driver. Oh, okay. So you're not allowed to go off road on these things. You can be fined or, and banned from the parks. And you don't want that when you're driving for a company and the company doesn't want you to. Right. right? 
because it may affect the whole company as a whole. So a guy who's off road, generally what they do is they, has anybody seen a ranger in this area? And they go, no, no, the ranger's over here. Okay. Oh, and off they go and they go check out something. Well, he got stuck. So now a bunch of other trucks are coming to help because they want to get him out of there before the ranger comes. Right. And they help each other. This is what they do. And so they decide that uh, our, our truck is the big one that can pull them out. Because this was just a pickup truck. We had like a big Hummer. Right. Hummer I, winches? Jeep. No winches. Uh, we, no, they just tied stuff on. And then yank winches. them out. Yeah, and he was going to back it out. DIY winch. And so he says, okay, while I'm doing this, the other truck over there, he says, there's a lion in the bushes. We're going to take, hop in there with those two women, and they're going to take you over to show you the lion. Okay. okay. I'm going to see the Which lion. is why they were off-roading. Because they were going to go trying to see the lion. So he goes around the other way, and he says, so the lion's in the bushes. And they're like, oh, too bad he's in the bushes. Not a problem. <sighs> He starts ramming the bushes. We're like, oh, um, uh, whoa, we're in a Jeep now, and this, we're exposed. Like, if this lion wants to come in, oh, and he keeps ramming the bushes. So the female lion comes walking out. But she, he says, you know, they sleep like 23 hours a day. They only are up for like an hour a day, and they hunt at night. So he, I'm like, so good, so you're waking her. She's <laughs> being in a great mood. You ever tried waking a woman? <laughs> so this lioness comes walking out. You get a couple pictures. She looks around, she lays down again, oh. just like falls over, and we're like, okay. <laughs> but literally, it was 15 feet. I, yeah, I was a little nervous. Yeah. So, a couple giraffes. We saw so many giraffes. Shout was, out to Mama K. She loves giraffes. There was a point, and there were pictures and, and videos, I'm sure, that you saw. There was a point where there was like 50 of them that just. We we stopped and they just came. and they just kept coming and they kept were coming, coming and ran in front of the, right the road around in front zebras, um, wild boar, wildebeest, and, and, and you know it's really incredible when your tour guide stands up and takes out his camera and starts going. I've never seen this before. He said he'd never seen that many together at and one just, time. You ever seen a giraffe run? It's so weird. <laughs> The, they're anatomically different, right? right? Yes. And the, yeah, yeah, yeah. They shouldn't I, be able to. I think to. the only one I ever saw one run was in Madagascar, the movie. <laughs> <laughs> was it Jeffrey? Yeah. <laughs> and he was awkward. Right. He and that's what it, but they yeah. are awkward. When you yeah. watch them run, they're just. Well, I mean, it's everything about them. And like, we can you imagine they, your first we moments as a baby sleep giraffe? standing up yeah. because one, once they fall, once they go down, they're they not can't get up. up again. They can't. Their that, head's too heavy. Because that's the gist, right? As a baby giraffe is born, it survives the. 20 foot drop yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and, it and then up. it's like man you get up or you die that's exactly it mm. and they sleep standing up they do everything they never ever lay if it falls down they're dead the lion's gonna get them right so they're not going out on friday nights and doing giraffe tipping <laughs> they are not <laughs> <laughs> all right and this i believe did you get lost and then you came there's one way you got lost and you ended up somewhere and got a great picture and I think it was this one, but I could be wrong. I don't recall at all. I don't even remember what that picture is, to be honest. I think that was like Goodbye Zanzibar or something. Was that while we were waiting for our plane? We had a couple of drinks at a pub before we went to the airport? It was pretty. Yeah. Yeah. So well, it was a very scenic place. Yeah. yeah. It was because we were at that beach um, place yeah. right on the beach. And that was um, all the kids. Yeah, all the kids were out swimming and playing. Yeah. So you're finishing up in Tanzania. Mm -hmm. You're starting to think about your next location. Mm -hmm. Um, Pretty easy where you wanted to go, or is this Mm -hmm. one of those things? Lots of hoops. Who's going to take us? Who's going to make it easy? And the next choice is? Sri Lanka. Because A, it was in the same part of the world. B, we'd always really wanted to go there. We had talked about Sri Lanka being a place we would like to go. Um, I used to be really into yoga, and it was like one of those places where lots of yogis that I knew had been there and said how beautiful it was and how great it was. Um, And they had just opened kind of like Thailand is now. So it's now Sri Lanka off the tip of India, and it's an island on its own? Yes. It's about 50 kilometers away from India. And like it's its own country. country. Country, yes. At one point, it was occupied by England. At one point, it was occupied by, is it Denmark? Uh, the Dutch. Dutch, yeah. Yep. 
because there's the Dutch hospital, remember? Yeah. The Dutch. I think the French. Yeah. yeah, I think the French. Uh, yeah. The Spanish. Spanish. Probably French. everyone's had a little bite But of they've it. only been um, decolonized, so independent for 40 years. Right. So that not even a full generation. So it's a country where you go into it and it's very easy for an English-speaking person to travel. All the signs are in English. And that's Most their second people, language taught in schools now is yeah. English. Most people speak a little bit, if not a lot. A lot so, of the signs are in English or both. It was easy. But it was a hard country to get to because they the have hoops. a quarantine program. So you basically, which was different from other parts of the world that were having quarantine programs. So you could go and you could stay in your resort or your hotel um, if it was an approved hotel uh, through their health, government health. Um, and you could, so you could stay in there and not stay in your room. So you'd, you'd have a COVID test to come into the country. Then when you arrived, you'd get a COVID test. Then you'd wait for the negative, uh, what, 36 hours, I think it was. Yeah. Once you have that negative, then you can go anywhere in the hotel. So, so for 36 pool, hours, you were, they would send you a piece of paper. You'd fill it out, and this is what you want for food. You'd stay in your room for 36 right. hours. Right. We, unfortunately, went to a place that was nothing like it was advertised. It uh, was just crappy. And we started looking at other places going, we could go to this resort with all you can eat buffets and have all this staff and it was cheaper. I'm like, why are we staying here? So we easy to break contracts. So once we got, uh, I connected with a, um, like a, a travel company that again, online Facebook group. I want to come here, yeah. but I'm here. How but do I'm I get here, out of this? Hell, yeah. And they or facilitated here's the pictures of what I bought. And here's the pictures of this was the single bed with the feet off, you know, okay, no, that wasn't the one anyway. Oh, but anyways, so it was, was yeah, it was pretty crappy. So it was like, here's what w was advertised. Here's what it actually is. And people really wanted to help us. So we had, we had several people say, you know, we can help you find another place. And we connected with one guy who works for, he's a manager for one of the travel companies, um, active in the groups because they all want to help people come to the country. Right. right? And so once we got our 36 hour negative, we were free to go. And they, he arranged us a vehicle from this place to that place. And we get there and we're like, oh. it was, like it, it was a four or five star hotel right on the ocean, massive pool, all you can eat buffets with, it was just incredible. Cause yeah, definitely it, the, the stuff you stayed that was smaller mums and pops or like Airbnb, it all looks so local, but I like before you left each place, it feels like you hit like a more traditional resort to kind of some. Yeah. Yeah. We're going to yeah. recharge, we're going to get clean, yeah. we're going yeah. to showers, and then exactly. bam. We're tired from having to plan everything we do. We're tired from traveling a lot. So, yeah, let's just go somewhere where we don't have to cook, we don't have to clean, we, we can well, have a nice shower. For this quarantine, it, you had to stay at one of these hotels. You had no choice. You these are the approved. hotel. Yeah. These are the ones that are approved. These ones you got to go to. And like she said, we had to have a negative COVID test to go in. We had to get another COVID test when we landed. Once the 36 hours, then you're allowed to move around the resort. Then I think it was day five. Okay. They gave us happen. another COVID test. A zone. Yeah. No, another COVID test. Okay. Once we got the result of that COVID test, then we were free to go to pre-approved tourist, uh, tourist, tourist destinations. Yeah. If we go in a pre-approved vehicle with a pre-approved guy with pre with time slots, a reservation, and all this, but usually the hotel looks after all that. Yeah. You say this is where I want to go, and they, and they charge you twice. And as it's much. ridiculous expensive. And that's when we went on the day trip, just because we wanted out of the hotel. Right. Yeah. Uh, and it was, I never would have done it. We never, but. Just for board. And I'm like, okay, fine, we'll pay the money. Let's go do this. Um, and then on day 12, you get another COVID test. And then when you get the results of that, then you're free to go anywhere, anywhere you want in the country, country. Off you go. Cool. And that's when the real adventure started. Yeah. So then we went to a small town called Marissa and we stayed at an Airbnb where we, sorry, a breakfast, bed and breakfast, where we paid $11 a night. No TV, but it had air conditioning, hot water. And it was really Two beds. nice. It was a really it was nice place. Newish. Like um, it had a. I don't know if people know what a plop is. Plop is like the the straw roof. Straw roof, wooden posts. Yep. But it's permanent. Um, but they make it out of the land, right? And underneath they got a concrete pad, and they had a full kitchen there. So if you want to go hit the grocery store and buy some stuff, and we did it a couple of times, made some food. But so our first there, I said it to the owner. The owner was um, Estonian, Estonian yeah. and her husband was Sri Lankan. Sri and I said, so where's a good place to go for breakfast? She said, you walk 100 meters, you make a right. There's a little house on the right-hand side. It doesn't look like a restaurant, but it is. Third one up. All right. She said, tell them I sent you so they charge you the right price. Okay. So we go up there. Hello, hello, hello. Welcome, welcome. What can I do? We're here for breakfast. Oh, fantastic. Have a seat. Have a seat. 
let me just, there you go. It's, it's COVID friendly now. <laughs> we, we sit down on these old stools on this dirty table. What do you want? What do you say? Yeah. He says, okay, come, come, come. Don says, you go. You tell me what they got. Takes me and he's got all these bowls. The food's already ready. He hands me a plate. What do you want? Curry chicken. Um, and this is like nine in the morning. Right. right. So in Sri Lanka, they serve curry for breakfast. Sometimes if they still have it to do lunch, they don't. Because it stews overnight. Right. It's ready in the morning. Yep. And they have uh, string hoppers, which are like little balls of very thin noodles. Um, dal, which is um, a lentil curry, kind of. Also, I'm having these different kinds of curries and for breakfast and all these noodles and some rice. And I grab her a plate of stuff, too. And he says, well, something to drink. And I said, I'll have a bottle of water. And she says, I'll have a coffee. He runs across the street and comes back with a big liter of ice cold water from the grocery, from the variety store. <laughs> her, he brews a fresh thing of coffee. All of a sudden done, he says, uh, our bill is like 250 rupees. I, I look it up. I'm like, that's not even. It was, $3. It was like $3. And did you even tell him that the lady had sent you? Yeah, yeah I said, oh, she yeah. Said, oh, right off the yeah, hop. Yeah. He says, yeah, the local price, three to, And I was like, not even three dollars right so i give him 500 rupees so i'm I'm leaving him like six bucks oh i change i'm not i'm like no no it's, it's fine it's fine oh no no it's too much too much no really i'm good with paying six dollars yep. yeah. and we'll probably be back yeah yeah we yeah. really yeah. liked it yeah. And, yeah yeah so you're um the breakfast do you, you went back a couple times i think we only went up going back once uh again we had a grocery store and bought some oatmeal and did our own thing at the at home and you know Fruit and toast and oatmeal is usually good enough. It's cool. I mean, and that's, as you say, right? You, you get a home base that you can cook out of or have a couple meals, saves you some money so mm-hmm. you can go more day trips and dinner yeah. and things like that, right? Sometimes we'd go for dinner and make sure we bought a little extra so we'd have lunch for the next day. Nice. So this is uh, that's the, the Nine, Nine Arch Bridge. Bridge. Yep, the Nine Arch Bridge. One of the big tourist attractions in Sri Lanka. Yeah, it's um, near Ella. Which is Which, kind of in the mountains, mid, yeah, in the middle right of the middle. Uh, Sri Lanka. Yeah. Beautiful, beautiful up there in the mountains. Yeah. But uh, to go to these places, you know, there's no tunnels. There's no, so you're winding up a mountain and going around to the other side and then winding back down. You're being then, brave. You know, you're going is, 40 kilometers uh, away, but it may well, take you three hours. I know what you're talking about. He's there's one where you're hanging out the. Over the edge. No. Yeah. Maybe it didn't get included. Oh, no. Oh, well. But yeah, you're yeah, hanging. She took a picture of it. You know, I'm holding on to the back edge just in case. And my and mother-in-law freak, didn't like I'm that picture. Out, going, yeah. you're oh, I'm watching all the other girls do their Instagrammable pictures. Right? Yeah. People die from doing these stupid <laughs> pictures for Instagram. It's yeah. crazy. I'll be and, that stupid Asian guy that leaned over the Grand Canyon. But I mean, too, it is, you know, you hear stories about, you know, you know, somebody's too close to the, the, the rail track and the train. And you're like, I think the train just hit that person. And they're all like, yep. Are we stopping? Nope. And you're like, oh. So I think there's probably a picture coming up, but one of the most memorable and things that we liked while we were there is being on the train in Sri Lanka. So when Britain was in charge, they put in railway tracks. Everywhere. Everywhere, and they brought in their own trains. And for next to nothing, you can get to the other side of the country on a train there. They're super slow. They're pretty uncomfortable, but they're massive windows, and you can have the windows wide open. And you can see this, you can actually see the landscape of the country. And you go from like ocean to mountains to jungles. You to... can hang out the doors while right. it's. Yeah. Nobody on the roof? No. no. That's more an Indian yeah. thing. Yeah. Yeah. Now, certain times of the day, uh, a lot of them are commuter trains as yep. well. So yep. they're pretty full cool. and they're standing room only. But uh, the but times COVID, of days we were on it, COVID too. There's, COVID, there's less people on it. No, t- there's barely any tourists in the country. And And we. One of the things I read was, so they have different classes of trains. So I think the first time we took the train, we got a first class ticket so we could have air conditioning. Great. But, but when you got the window wide open anyway. <laughs> What's point about the next, AC? The next time we went, we went third, I think third class, more with the locals. And people shared their food with us. Right. And that's what I read is like, it's like being amongst family right. when you're on and, the train. Right, if you're trying to be involved and yeah i have no idea what she gave us it was very good i said thank you yeah i don't know what it was some dessert sweet Sweet. yeah some some sweet yeah thank you so again this was another one that caught my attention because brian didn't like the the climb down yeah and the climb back up again in one of our facebook groups don met a met a couple girls that were uh canadians from toronto 
uh, that were traveling as well. And they wound up following us because we had started uh, Mr. and Mrs. Uh, Midlife Crisis. Yes. Um, we, I started talking in, <clears throat> in Egypt at the beginning. And so they wanted to come to Egypt. And can you give us any information? And so we gave Don helped her, them along. So they went to Egypt. Then off we went to Tanzania and they said, oh, we should go to Tanzania next. So they kind of chased They were yeah. chasing us for a yeah. while. So then we wound up being in Sri Lanka at the same time. And we had the same guy doing that Donna just mentioned that was hooking us up on where to go and where to stay and with our visas and that. And we said, well, they're going to be not too far from us. Can you hook us up with a vehicle and send us there? And we'll surprise them, hang out with them for a couple of days. And so we met them at this hotel and it was a four room hotel. And there was only the four of us. So we, each, we had two rooms and it was just us. And, you know, they walk in and we got our masks on. They're just sitting there and they go walking by and Don stands up. She says, do I sound familiar? Because they talked on the phone. Yes. Yeah, we She's like, oh, my God. It's you guys. <laughs> hey, we're going on a hike tomorrow. So it's want, so when you somebody, Scott, when somebody says to you, I'm going to go on a hike tomorrow, what do you think? <laughs> you know, I think I'm going to be meandering through the woods, yeah. walking for a few kilometers. Mm. We're going to see a waterfall. Okay, great. Nice. So oh, well, no, they don't tell you they're taking you up to this hill. And and that's 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 a, that's, that's a mild set of stairs. That's a mild set. Some of it was just rock and mud. And so we hiked down this thing. And the whole way down, I'm thinking, my legs are starting to burn. And this is descending. <laughs> And we go down there and we get all the, and this was that the one with all the massive rocks where you couldn't get past or didn't that want to. That was the first one. I and I, like, there were some points where I'm like, we're going from rock to rock. And I'm like, oh, I'm a little bit nervous about this. And, you know, the, I push myself past it and I get over all these rocks and we swim in this thing and they go, go under the waterfall. And it's amazing. We get some great pictures, enjoy it, climb over these rocks again, get back on. Hey, it's time to get started. Out. And we get up there and I'm done. Like, it probably took me 45 minutes of climbing. My legs are on fire. We're down there like, okay, we're going to the next waterfall for another little hike. I said, what are you talking about little hike? You told me hike yesterday. There was no hike. This was stairs. Yeah. This was straight and up, you... straight down. So we want, I wound up, they all guilted me into it, except Donnie. She was like, you probably should. I was like, don't go. You can't go. But all the locals were pushing me and egging me on. I'm like, whoa, I can do that. It was it's, a mistake. Not, it's not as big as the last one. <laughs> it's not as big. It's not as bad. It says the, the 300 pound tour guy that didn't come with us. Right. It's not as bad. I'm staying at the car. So I go down and I come back up and I'm done. And I had my phone on with, with me in my pocket and it did the steps. It was only half the sea, well, the sea and tower. It was only half. Was it half? No, Maybe not even. Because there was one place you didn't go that's supposed to be the spot to go. Oh, that's oh, yes. two and a half times. That's the sea. five yes. times the sea and oh. town. Yes, and it's uh, it's called Adam's Peak. Yep. And at the top of it, there's a footprint which they believe to be Adam's. Or if you're, Buddha's. If, depending or... on which religion, or it's sure. Buddha's, or it's whoever's footprint, and it's a pilgrimage. You leave it like one or two in the morning because you got to get up there for when the sunrise. Right. And it's five times the height of the sea and tower, and there's seniors doing this. Yep. And you were like, and the girls were like, "We're going to go do this in a couple of days. You want to I'm come?" I said, oh, "Hell no! No, you people are stupid and retarded." <laughs> but we did go rafting with them. Yes, um, which was awesome. There you all yeah. are. It was totally not whitewater rafting, but it was a nice. There was a couple of... little eddies. Right. It was, <laughs> it was nice fun. To you know what? Around, and it was floated. nice to jump off the boat and float around. with warm water. Yeah. Probably snakes that could have killed us. But who knows? Whatever. Better not to ask those questions. Yeah. No one got. Bother. No one got bit. Hey, I I jumped in. He didn't say anything. So yeah. Yeah. So there's your oh, that's another elephant. Oh yes, yeah, so we that's a to... small eared out el- big eared, big, small eared. That's a big eared. Because you were saying there's a difference. There is between an Asian no, and an African. I don't African, know which yeah. is which. <laughs> Asian elephants have big ears. No, Asian elephants have small ears. African elephants have big ears. I think I screwed that up. Whatever. Whatever. It's another elephant. Yeah. Who doesn't like an elephant? Lots mm-hmm. of elephants. They're pretty majestic. There's Brian's uh, Instagram moment. Yes. There it is. Just like all the influencers. <laughs> it wasn't a thousand foot drop on the other side of that. No, it was no, right no, at the ocean. Right the there yeah. you go. Very responsible. Very responsible. Mm-hmm. Did you know Pepper grew on trees? I know that now. <laughs> Did you know? I don't know. Probably not. That's cool, though. Yeah, we went on a spice tour. And like I, I never even occurred to me. So you know how cinnamon's all curled? It's because it's bark, and they're stripping it from the tree, and it curls as they're stripping it. I didn't know cinnamon came from bark of a tree. I figured they just ground it from nuts. But you've seen cinnamon sticks. Yeah. So that's what they ground the powder. So they pull from. that off, and then it curls. Yeah. It curls as they're as, pull, it as they're stripping it. Yeah. 
I didn't know that. Yeah. There's so much stuff we learned. It was interesting to go on these like, little and so like much nutmeg has like five different layers. And so much comes like a, from that part of the right of the world. Our yeah. whole taste Africa, palette. India. Yeah. yeah. Comes from there. And the different the, the different peppers are based on when it's harvested. It's all the same red pepper, black pepper, it's all the same Pink when they harvest it. Yeah. Right. Sort of like coffee. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So depending when you yeah. and yeah. Well, that's cool. So back, you were saying a uh, very spiritual place. Yes. So lots, lots. of temples. Lots. And ideally, same deity, same religion as what you would see in India, or does so, it get to be a little no. different? So Sri Lanka is pr predominantly a Buddhist country, except in the north. So in the north is um, the Tamil population, which Near is... Jaffna. Yes, so Jaffna is the, the main city from that population, and they are Hindu. And so the rest of the country are Sinhalese. Um, they speak Sinhalese, and they are Buddhists. So they had a civil war for 20 years, and it just ended, I think, about 10, 10 years, years ago. ago. So they're in civil war, and then the tsunami comes, and kills Decimates half them. half the island right right and then they go back to they continue the war to fight and then they decide no we're gonna so here's an interesting one for you we we were we were in Sri Lanka, i guess it was mm -hmm. uh and we were leaving earth the hotel and there's two white guys there which you don't see very often and they were much younger than us but so they were in the pool so we thought we'd go over and say hi where are you from? Because we figured they're from the States. And really, oh, we're, we're from Wisconsin. Ah, yeah, you can hear the twang now. Yeah. yeah okay. What brings no, you? No, 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 Minnesota. Minnesota, that Minnesota. was it. Yeah, we're from Minnesota. <laughs> and they said, what brings you here? Oh, we're here on business. We own a uh, coconut farm in Sri Lanka. Right. You guys and own import, export? They're an import, export company. Uh, they're using the coconut husks instead of mulch. They're, they're using... It's a big thing, apparently. Yes. So, so if you look at a lot of the hanging baskets. Yeah, it's cocoa or coconut. cocoa or coconut now. It's coconut, yeah. yeah. So these guys bought this farm. I think sight unseen. Not really sure. One of the first things they had to do was bring in a company to sweep for mines before they could uh, use the farm, because the whole country is covered in mines still, apparently, from the Civil War. That was not even twenty years ago. It ended like 10 or 12 10, years ago. 10, 12 These guys years bought ago? it seven years ago and they I had thought, to get a certain mine. I thought mine no one used mines anymore. I thought it was like against the Jehiva Con Convention. This is a civil war. This isn't a and war war. it's also war. an older... Um, been going on for a long time. An older, <sighs> not an, an older society. Yes. Right? So they may not be as... It's more like guerrilla warfare. Right. right? And we hate them. Right. Yes. And we're going to kill <laughs> and them. And they hate us. So right. this yeah. is how we're going to do it. And that's actually during the Civil War is when you saw a mass exodus of Sri Lanka people come to Canada. Right. A lot of Tamils because they, they, were, were, they were persecuted. And they're the minority. They are the minority. So, right. There's another one. So some of these are really like poignant. I think that one, you could have, we climbed up to the head. Yes. On the backside, there's yes. stairs and you could oh, get cool. in there and look at it. Yeah. That's right in Candy, I believe. Right. And some of these are actually very poignant locations and like um, the the tooth one. Yep. Yeah, so the. Um, Which might have been the, the yellow one. Uh, no, the one before. Yes. The Temple of the Tooth. So the Temple of the Tooth is apparently where they keep a piece of Buddha's tooth that was brought to the country. Um, there are actually stories of pieces of the Buddha and his, his body in different parts of the world. So in, um, in Chiang Mai in Thailand, there is a, a huge um, temple at the top of the mountain and there's a temple in the, the city. So what happened was there was two elephants and they were each given a piece of the Buddha and the elephants went in different directions and one went to the top of the hill and one went there and that's where they built these temples. No, is that why the and one that, has the stuffed elephant? No, no. that was just, uh, that was like a a creepy old temple. And all those things in that temple were gifts. It's just, yeah. Yep. 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 There was cars, there was guns, there was radio. People were just giving stuff to the temple. The weirdest thing. Just a gift. Just a gift. Yeah. 
Here, have a Lincoln, have a Lincoln from, Town Car. Dignitaries from whatever country from the, would from come. From the 60s. Right? Yeah. Yeah. So the Temple of the Tooth is like one of the most important temples in all right. of Sri Lanka. And there's so, a cutie on the... Uh, that's the train. On the train. That was the train. That, that was the third class train. Um, and that little boy just was so interested in us. And we just kept going. <laughs> and then he let me take his picture. I just... You look at his face and it's like, uh, it's pure, innocent right? and pure. And pure. Mm-hmm. He's having it, yeah. Yeah. And what's amazing, so you're on the train, and as you're going, you see a lot of farmland, and they're out there with their hoe. And it's so well organized and so well layered. And like, you have one layer here, another layer up a little higher, another Very layer. Very tiered. It's tiered. And they got these mud stairs going from one to the next. And it's all just very pristine and, and very well. And it's all tea. And it, no, that's not what I'm talking about. The, the tea was the big bushes. Oh. You're, oh, you're talking about like... Just farmland with whatever they're growing. Carrots, beets, whatever. Oh, sure. But yeah, there's a lot of tea farms. And, and it's absolutely all hand. Everything's yes. done by hand. Yeah. Tea, they got massive sacks that are hanging from their head. They're picking tea leaves and throwing them in the sack. And they get paid by the, the, the kilo. Right. Piecework. Piece work. I guess way and it's Oof. very, very low, low pay. Yeah. Like really bad. Mm-hmm. Have you ever heard of C- Ceylon tea? Like C E Y L O N? I don't think so. So when Sri Lanka was a colony uh, under Britain, it was called Ceylon. So if you ever see someone that's something that says Ceylon tea or what, that's, that's actually Sri Lanka. Because that was what it was called yeah. when that yeah. company began. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, very cool. So, uh, that was the little guy. So, so we're, we're at the point now where we've left the main part and we're staying in Candy, which yep. is inland. We stayed at the ocean for quite a while. We actually saw a surfing competition. Yes, while that was one there. of the reasons why you went to that yeah. location. Yeah. That was cool. Because we a, knew there would be people. Right. Because yeah, the like, first you know, place we went wasn't very busy. I'd never seen a surfing competition before. Turned out the waves were really small and it was bad weather for surfing, but they right. still had it. And right. It was entertaining for a little bit and they had a party going on. That's so. Cool. Through one of the groups, I got to talking back and forth with the guy, and I said, you know, what's going on this weekend? There's a big surfing conference, and there's anywhere to meet. He said, like, actually, I'm DJing in this party on this night. Why don't we meet up with us there? We're going to meet here first for dinner. So we go meet him and some of his friends for dinner. Nice guys from British. Lives in Sri Lanka, though. Turns out he lives in Candy, and he owns a pub. So we hang out with him. He DJed. Actually, I think we left before he DJed. He didn't, it was three in the morning. He still hadn't got on. We said, I'm we're out of here. We're too old for this. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny how that goes. Yeah. Eh? I'm done. I've seen enough. So we, uh, and then we said, you know what? We're going to go to candy. He says, well, you got to come see me then. So come to my pub. I'll, I'll help you figure out what you need to do. And we get there and they had, um, he, he made us a big uh, British breakfast. Because Don hadn't had bacon oh, in forever. Oh, I was like, I miss bacon so much. So he made us a nice, big... Proper English breakfast, yeah. bangers and beans. Right. And all that good stuff. Uh, and he says, well, here's, we already had a list of a couple places we want to check out. And he said, actually, I know a guy. Why don't you check out these couple places, too? So we check out this place. Meh. Check out this place. No. Check out this place. We're like, oh, this is actually really nice. Um, get in touch with the owner. Actually, I think the owner met us there. And we said, okay. So... Again, this is COVID times. He hadn't rented it out in a year. A year. Yeah. It had been empty. And what it was was a house with two bedrooms. You know, you walk in, set of stairs up. There's a bedroom on each side. And then upstairs, there's like a study, a pool table room, a kitchen, and then a massive patio that overlooks this massive rugby field. Did you ever see any rugby? We did. Oh, cool. Yeah, they were practicing. Right. But there was no games. Right. So I said, okay, how much? Because he says, well, normally I charge $1,000 per room per month. I said, that's a little bit over our budget. And he said, well, because of COVID, I can't even rent out the other room. I can only rent out to you. We paid 500 US for the month for the whole place to ourselves. And it, like the bedroom was like a bedroom and a bathroom and its own and a balcony, wash, and a washing, washing machine. machine. It wasn't like being in a little room. Nice. And then we had the upstairs. And we could cook for ourselves and do all those things. And they, there's different... Like they have uh, like skip the dishes, but there it's called Pick Me. And with that app, you can order a taxi, a tuk tuk. Do you know what a tuk tuk is? Nope. So a tuk tuk is like uh, like nice. a rickshaw. Okay. But it's run by a, a motorcycle. So it's a three wheeled motorcycle. Two people sit in the back. It's covered. And me 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 me. For about two and a half bucks, you can get anywhere in the city you want to go. There you are. Um, you can order food through it. You can all kinds of things. You can order through it from any restaurant, and it's right to your door. You pay on the app. See, then you don't have to feel, I always feel guilty, like, with a real rickshaw, where the guy's the power, yeah, I'm yeah. like, yeah. but that, I yeah. wouldn't feel guilty. And there's thousands of them yeah. in Asia, they're all over the place. <laughs> yeah. 
Uh, so we stayed in Candy for quite a while, and the guy that we met owns this pub, and we usually went once a week. He had live music there. It's so strange, though. So you go there. So the first time we go, we think, well, you know, let's have a little nap first. We'll have a little something to eat. We'll go have some drinks and we'll listen to the band. We'll head out around 9, 11 o'clock. Last call. I'm like, what do you mean last call? Uh, he says, oh, if you're not at the ocean, we're not a tourist area, so we have to do last call at 11 here. Uh, Interesting. So next time we're like, okay, we go out at 7. Right, <laughs> right. We have our dinner there. We'll, have, we'll just have dinner yeah, there. Yeah, yeah. Huh. They're, they're, they're musicians, like the band that played. They would play like English and Sinhalese songs. You said there's they a lot like of a lot of yeah, a lot of North American music and yeah. singing and and it's interesting because towards the end of the night, it's almost all men there, and they're singing and they're and dancing. they're dancing with each other like yeah, a bunch like, of women would at a yeah. wedding, but it's men and the women. It's, it's just culturally different than us, right? Yeah. yeah. Whereas at a, at a wedding with us, we'll have a couple guys up dancing, but only if there's women involved. Right. If yeah. there's no women, I can't dance. Nope. Why would I be dancing? Yeah. There it's woo. Yeah. A bunch of woo guys <laughs> instead of woo girls. <laughs> and that actually, if if you look on a lot of the blogs, his restaurant is for that town, yeah, best place to see the sunset. Because it's like you can it's like overlooks right. the lake. So candy is around a lake. And it's just beautiful. So it's interesting to like read in stuff about this is a great place then to meet someone who owns it and he's a great guy and we spent a lot of time there yeah that was that was pretty fun and you say your do- your dollars go obviously yes. yeah a little further we go there. grocery shopping we hit the markets right at the end of our driveway there's a, a little old lady with a little fruit stand and you know i'd, I'd go up and say okay i'll, I'll take uh, some of this and some of that and she'd weigh it all out and then t- write down the number because we didn't speak each other's language write it down and say okay and i'd give her like a little extra and she'd go but like, like, I'll give you three bucks instead of the two fifty. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Right. So cheap. Yeah. So, but there's bugs there. There's bugs everywhere. There's bugs everywhere. Yeah. Weird looking. Bugs I like too. to take pictures of weird bugs. Well, right. You're never going to see that. Well, I don't know what that. that was. You were in the hospital when I took oh, okay. a picture of that bug. That's a flying bug. <laughs> <laughs> kind of looks like an ant. It kind of does, but it's it was way bigger. It was like this big. That's easy. It's That's frog. a cool frog. Though. Frog with sticky finger. Yeah. A centipede, some kind of centipede. Thank God, large that was, though. Those things were, are large, like yeah, like like. And like, how big around? <laughs> yeah, that one was actually dead. Thank God. Oh, there you go. <laughs> but that oh. doesn't mean there weren't live ones. And I mean, like, I, I know the one room had ants, um, but would you like shake your shoes out in no. the morning, like no. when you were getting up? But like, they're not, they're not pers- pervasive. They're not no. everywhere. No. Nowhere we traveled it was there really an ant issue. Mexico, maybe a little. Hi. There's, there's one room where. You... No, that was mosquitoes. No, Tanzania. Oh, when you checked right. in yeah, and they're yeah. like. Yes. And you got right. That was number six. Right. Yeah, you're right. You're right. <laughs> you're right. I love you, dear. <laughs> um, yeah. Um, so, but yeah, I, I think that's that's part no, of it, right? You don't see scary bugs like all the time. No scorpions? Nope. No spiders? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Like spiders that kill you? Mm, I don't think so. In Tanzania, no. they're like big as your hand, though. But they're not. Are they poisonous? I don't think I don't so. Think so they did look you... more like daddy long legs right. than a tarantula. But did you? Still... Yes, I remember. Yeah, I mean, there's not one there. Right, I did a picture. Yeah, yeah. There's definitely um, that one looks. Like so where tarantula. you guys traveled? Yeah. Nothing other than like carnivorous. That's the wrong word. Wildlife that would eat you. There was no bugs that would kill you. No snake. There'd be. There's got to be snakes there that would kill you. Probably, but probably, but I mean, we, but I mean, no issues. We're not staying in a tent in the middle of no. nowhere, right? I mean, we saw lots of wild cats, wild dogs, yes. monkeys. Um, so many monkeys. The cats. We got to go back to the cats. We got to okay. tell your cats. Uh, squirrels. I saw a white squirrel, which I thought was an albino. I said, no, no, that's just the color. Of it's white all the white. time. Do you remember seeing the picture of or the video of the monkey licking the window? Yes. So I took. Uh, a, I was going for a week, but. So I went to a Buddhist monastery to do a silent retreat. You went for a week? Well, I, she went to I go, went for, to a go week. for a week. Oh, okay. And I It's a up, long time of being quiet. Yeah. And, and I, I was feel actually, like you like to talk. I actually I do. <laughs> Which is funny enough, I just have always been in the last couple of years just wanted to go to a place where I know there's lots no of, expectation, no, right? No, I know lots of people that have done that and really taken a lot away from it. Yeah. Some have done very well. Some not so much. I had a hard time, but um, I really, I liked it. 
Um, well, first of all, it's she COVID. might have been, I was the, she only might have one been the first one there since COVID. Yes. So it and been she's there by herself on a silent retreat. So there's not even like that real. There's nothing to be entertained by, you, even if you don't want to like. You except know, the monkeys. Except the monkeys, and you know they gave her a book, and she's like, "Oh, I'm going to read a book." I don't know. So I there was one place, a meditation room that was basically a glass room um, with a statue of the Buddha, and I would sit there and I would meditate. Except these, this whole troop of monkeys would come play there every day. So I'm like, how am I supposed to meditate? Hey, when kids. When there's a monkey over here licking the window. Yeah, I'm doing something here. <laughs> Don't, yeah. When monkeys are sitting there licking the window, staring at me. And yeah, they were the best. So uh, this is back in. Tanzania. So we're backtracking a little bit. This yeah. poor little yeah, old cat. Yeah. Not doing so well right there. So we went to this restaurant that's actually a very uh, well-known restaurant in Stonetown in Tanzania. And there were cats everywhere. And nobody's um, cats. They're not pets. No, they're feral cats. They're, they're feral. It's like yeah. that in a lot of countries, feral yeah. cats where they're you're eating feral. and they're also in there. Oh yeah. Oh. I fed a lot of cats in the last year. Um and there was quite a few that looked very unwell. Right. So I took some pictures and I went on Facebook and I found a local rescue and I sent them the pictures and I said, Can somebody please you know, is there somebody who can help rescue like these animals are in need? And they went back uh, or they and that was, I think, our second last day in the country. So we were leaving the country. And when we got to the next country, I got a message from them. They had rescued that cat and they had he is. sewn him up and he was all happy. And I don't know about that was Tanzania, but I know I was talking to some one of our tour guides. I think it was Sri Lanka. And I asked, I said, so why don't they do something about all these stray cats and stray dogs? Like Mexico is more dogs. A lot of the other countries were cats. Sri Lanka, and I said, why don't they do so? And they said, well, they used to. But then all the uh, animal rights people got upset and went to the government. And it's now illegal to spay or neuter a cat or a dog. I don't know that it's illegal. He said they're not allowed to gather them up and do that anymore. It's not humane. And yet they're, they're suffering because, yeah, just not the ability to take care of themselves. My favorite mm -hmm. part of the, that story or that is that even when you're on the other side of the world and you're just two people you can still make a big difference in the life of something small right, yep. right? it could have been you know anything but it feels good to do nice does. things it's, and i love cats so much so you know so i don't know whether you guys want to talk about it a whole lot you end up not feeling so well oh, while which you're... Is, which is why I left the monastery. So I, wanna... I, I wasn't doing well in the monastery after a couple of days. I, for some reason, my brain was just telling me, this isn't the time. This is not for you. So I ended up going home. And that afternoon... She got home that night. The next morning, we were. I was supposed, we to, meet, I was supposed to meet with uh, our friend Michael, who owns the pub. And a couple of his friends, the expat expats, group. he said they get together for lunch like once a month or something at this restaurant downtown. It's a really cool place. You got to come check it out. Okay. I said, well, Don's back. She's going to come out too. Oh, the more the merrier. There was another married couple coming anyway. So we go down there. We meet them. We have a nice lunch, a couple of drinks, try some different food. By the end of lunch, I'm like, I don't feel good. And she's, and Don says, you know, we're going to get another beer. I said, no, actually, I'd like to go. She's like, and I was like, what? what? I'm like, no, I, I just don't feel good. So we call, order a tuk-tuk and go back home. And, um, you know, day goes by, two days goes by. I'm still not feeling well. Mm -hmm. So then uh, it's time for us to leave where we were in Candy, where we rented that place for uh, four weeks. So we headed off to a hotel. and Because uh, we were supposed to go on a tour of the northern part of the island. Right. Um, but we, but I, I just canceled was, that. We but just I just started. wasn't feeling well. I'm like, I can't do it. So we get to this hotel and Don goes through whatever channels and finds a doctor and the doctor comes and he asks me all the questions on the phone first. And then he comes with all the medications just from the answers of my questions without checking me out and then prescribes them all for me and hands them to me and sells them to me. And of course does a COVID test and we get the results back from the COVID test. And I'm fine. He's basically telling me I got the flu or the man flu or something like that. And a couple more days go by and I'm still I'm feeling worse and we're like, I can't eat and I can't sleep and I'm in pain. So we get, a, a lab tech to come from the hospital to take his blood to see if he has 
dengue fever. Dengue fever. That's right. Because everyone's like, he has dengue. Like it sounded it's like. It's it, Right? <laughs> yeah, I got bit by a skeeter. I don't know. Huh? Right. So and that comes back that I don't have dengue fever. So another day goes by and Don says, you know what? Let's go to the hospital and we'll get a COVID test. And so there's an entrance. So we went to the public hospital. Because it was the only place to get a COVID and test. It, I'd never been to a hospital in another country before. And this reminded me of like some of the ones where you see on TV and it's like a war going on. Just guys on gurneys going by in the hallway and they're <sighs> as they're running by. Yeah, and, and like that. somebody just came out of heart surgery and they're still like, he's still half open and not filling, just sewing up. And you're like, holy, <laughs> excuse me, pardon me. And most of the windows are wide open. And, no, there's no windows. Or there's it's no windows at all. Block with open right. And they go upstairs, go there. All right. So we go up to where I'm supposed to get tested because they want to test me again for COVID. So I go up to there and there's nobody there. Next to us, though, there's about 80 people waiting in the rabies clinic. Thank God she got rabies shots. Right? It's a thing. Yeah. yeah. Um, the, and then they say, okay, this is where you're going to go for the COVID test. And we're like, I don't understand. Don's like, I don't understand what you're saying. And I'm sick and not even listening. And so the nurse is like, okay, follow me. Thank God. She takes us down, out onto the street, down the road, and, and then opens up, the a, and then opens up a gate into a construction zone, and we go in there. And it's like, and they've got this tent set up, and it's all plastic, clear plastic, with all the people in behind there. And then they got this booth with a woman sitting in the booth with like the Homer Simpson gloves, right? Where yeah. he's got the plutonium or whatever. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> the, yeah. The, 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 the uranium or whatever. Yes. And there's a chair sitting there in front of it, and they call my name, and I go sit down. And buddy, first he hoses her down in her gloves and wipes them all off, and then does the chair. Yeah. And then puts plastic on it, and then I sit down, and she's like pushes me back with the glove and leaves me back. Her, rawr, rawr. This is the one you wanted to punch in the no, head. No, that's not even the bad one. No, yeah, she no. does that, and then we get the results from that negative. I don't have COVID. I'm feeling still feeling bad, and I, I don't remember how you decided to go. Oh, I think she contacted our insurance company. Well, the, because the doctor that came and the technologist, it was our insurance company that arranged all right. that. Right, and, and, like, and so our insurance company was aware that he was ill and. And things aren't progressing. And even the the guy who helped us um, get us to that other hotel, the uh, travel guy, he um, he was really good with me. And he um, he contacted the consulate to let the consulate know that there's a Canadian here who's sick, who's in hospital, um, which, you know, I would have never thought to do that. So eventually they like, sent us to a hospital, but it's a fancier. Right. It's a private hospital. Right. So we get there. And they say, well, uh, you might have COVID. I said, no, I just had two COVID tests in the last week. I'm they, fine. They didn't want and to I let said, him well, in. we can, we don't deal with COVID here. I said, okay, well, I don't have COVID. Right. But okay, he had a fever. We're going to have to test you first before you can. Awesome. This is the woman that got so deep that she almost got punched. And then, you know, we're just sitting on chairs outside in the parking lot waiting for the results because it was a rapid test and negative. And she had to get tested to come in with me. Right. So when we go, we don't have COVID. They admit me. They start running all these tests. They're not. Nobody's really sure what's happening. They don't really get it. They just know I'm feeling worse. They've got me hooked up to all these machines. They're giving me antibiotics to try and fight with something they don't know what it is. Um, long story short, um, my blood pressure plummets, and they rush me off to intensive care to ICU. And uh, you know now I've got a nurse 24 hours, and they want to give me another COVID test. They finally figured out. They think it's, it was sepsis. Right. And it sepsis, was sepsis. And sepsis. Blood poisoning. Yes. Yeah, but they don't know how I got it, and they and, never could figure it out. And never he ever. He could have stubbed his toe. He right. could have got could, a It could have been a cuticle. Who knows? Right. Like, they don't know how I got it. They just know that was it. And then after a while, I just started feeling a little bit better, and I was just done being they there. They pumped him full of um, the same type of antibiotics that they would give for a very high, like, viral. Right. I started Which, it's better. all rough, right? Yeah. yeah I'm like, I don't want to be here to anymore. It. I just want to go. And they're like, well, we have to get these test results back. And until we get these test results back. We're not going to let you go. And then they finally get it back. And they're like, okay. Now you need to pay. Now you need to pay. And you can't leave until you've paid. And our insurance company was like, don't worry about anything. We'll cover it. You don't have to pay. So now we're sitting in the hospital just waiting while they do the back and forth negotiating the bill. And we sat for like seven hours waiting for them to negotiate the bill. And the Don was in contact. And they're like, whatever. If they say no, we'll look after. Don't worry about it. They were like, do not give them money. Because we will not reimburse you. Wow. Possibly, but it would be more than they think it's going to be. Right, right. They say this is the bill, and so at the end of the day, it was over ten over ten thousand dollars US for how many days? Five. Five days, and there was not even a surgery involved. Well, except for the little one. 
Yeah, they took he some fluid lumbar. out of my spine. He had a lumbar puncture. First, they wanted to see if I had uh, meningitis. Right? 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 Which made sense, right? Because right? he had There's, a really bad yeah. headache. And... Oh, my gosh. That didn't uh, feel uh, good. Uh, no. Like a needle shoved into my spine. Yeah. I feel what? bad for every woman that has another girl. I was like, oh, my God. Did yes. they give you the list of things that can happen yes. when they do that? Yes. <sighs> I was oh. like, he has no idea what he's in for. <laughs> uh, but I have pictures, if you want to see. You didn't see. You were in the room for that. But he's sho- shoving the needle up my back, and I'm like, oh, he's like, you Don't. feel that? I'm like, yeah. yeah. He's like, oh, all right, get more, uh, we'll do a couple more needles. For you. More local, more local. <laughs> oh, dear God. So at the end of the day, you get out, you're feeling better. It really does put a damper yeah, it on kind, everything. Kind of shut down Sri Lanka and kind of did that. Okay, let's just get out of here. And just, so let's just go home. Right. Well, Sri Lanka, Del- so Delta had just hit Sri Lanka. And they were starting to It looked like it was going to be a bad shit show there. And right, this is probably the same time, maybe a little later, that India started. Yeah. Same time. Yes. Right, everything over there yes. starts to ramp up. Yes, because we were going to go to uh, the Maldives after. We and had then, our flights booked. We had everything booked. And then um, the government said, we're not taking anybody from Sri Lanka. So if we wanted to go to the Maldives, we'd have to go somewhere else and stay for a while and then go to the right. so, I uh-huh. love how there's this ability to cheat the system yeah. and be like, oh, we'll just go here yeah. and then we can get there. Yeah. And this is also, you know, this is early May. So the vaccines are now out. Yep. And we they, can't get one. We can't get one. We even, we even thought maybe if we paid for one, we, maybe we could get one under the table here right. in Sri Lanka somewhere. We couldn't even for people we knew. They're like, nah, they're, government the government's got control tight. on them. Yeah. And if the government was like, okay, first the army, then the government, then, then the yeah. hospitals. Right. And then the tourism. And then models. tourism. Then the people. Right. Because first we got to get the tourists back. Right. Before so, our people are safe. So, <laughs> yeah. Free vaccines. Yes. So you make the choice to come home yeah. via America. Well, America. so we had to fly into JFK anyways. And we were going to pay for a vaccine. Or, no, we were going to go to we were going to rent a car and go to pennsylvania because pennsylvania was giving them out for free right um but just days before we were going there new york decided we're going to put mobile buses mobile vaccination places in every tourist destination in the city and anybody can get vaccinated so i believe that was grand central that station was grand we went to grand station. central station we lined up at like seven in the morning seven thirty. wait in like 30 minutes Boom, we both got our shots, and then, and then yeah. they give us a free Metro Pass for the week yeah. while we're there anyway. Beautiful. Yeah. Done. And it was the Johnson & Johnson one shot. One shot. Yeah. And there's little Brian being brave. Yeah. Such a, look at me. <laughs> <laughs> Which is, that? I mean, right, that was exciting. I was excited for you guys when you got that, because it's like, right, oh, one shot, you're done. Yeah. One That's enough. cool. Yeah. Our doctor does did tell us he thinks we should get a booster. Right. Just. And again, we may skirt the system and go get a shot here in Canada and not tell them that we already have a shot. Right. How do they know? Well, we did register it. Otherwise, we won't put part of the QR code if we don't, right? Uh, right. Which is, oh, that was due, no, 22nd. We did. I love how they're already asking well, for Well, right now, you just proof. need that piece of paper and a I driver's know. license. It All is right. what it is. I know. I love, We're going to get it. It's coming. 22nd. We'll have a code. That's on Wednesday. That's in two days. Yeah. Uh, no, you won't get the code till October sometime. Uh, Right now, you gotta have the piece of paper yep. and your driver's license. Yeah, we uh, we did some uh, photo captures, and it's on the phone. And yeah, Beautiful. yeah, that's all you need. But uh, and then uh, this is uh, down in the fabric. No, not the fabric garment. district. Garment district. Yes, isn't that a cool? And that's a sewing machine. I had to look at another picture to figure out what it was because <laughs> I was like, "What is that man doing?" He's wearing a yarmulke too. Oh, there you go. I thought he had a, just a very distinct hairline. But um, yeah, it's uh, it's cool and right as you say. How many days were you there? Three. Three didn't get the. I mean, in New York, and it's and it's shut down. You know, all the Broadway was shut down. Um, Restaurants were, I think, only patios. Right. And if they didn't have a patio, they're only doing. At least it was the weather was beautiful. We did a lot of walking. We sat on a few patios. We walked a lot. And we stayed in bed for probably a whole day because the the vaccine did knock us on our ass for a day. And we also had jet lag. The vaccine. It's. I would tell you. it definitely seems everybody's second shot mm-hmm. has definitely missed work for a couple yes, days. I, First shot something. didn't seem to get everybody too bad, mm-hmm. but now this it's consistently everybody or everybody thinks, well, 
Don and Brian and Scott all had a day off when they got their I'm second good. shot. Yeah. I'm not feeling so good. <laughs> oh, I'm pretty sure everybody when I was working at Joe's store, um, I'm pretty sure, including Joanne, she definitely was off a couple days. Yep. And I think that there was a two week period where everyone was going to get their second shot. And it's like, oh, they're gone for a few days. You got yeah. her, right? Yeah. So you come home, you buy a trailer. Your, your trailer people now. Mm-hmm. So this this is the plan to summer in Canada mm-hmm. and yeah. travel your winter. Our winters. plan is we're going to be snowbirds. Nice. You know, like we're in our 60s or 70s. So it's we've like, got a trailer it's like he's taking Lake. a page out of his parents' book. Okay. Yeah. So we've got a trailer on Pigeon Lake. Just deck's almost finished being built. We built a shed. We've got all the things we've really New barbecue? Made. New barbecue. Mm-hmm. We bought ourselves a, a new car to us. You know, something yeah. that's just cheap and reliable. And I'm hoping to find somewhere to store it for the winter indoors. So it'll only see five months a year on right. the summer on the road. Nice. So hopefully it'll last a long time. Right. Um, and then our plan is, I think it's October 17th, we're going to take off to Thailand. We've been doing a lot of research on it. Uh, Thailand is similar in the like uh, Sri Lanka respect, where you got to have a, first you got to be double vaccinated now. You got to have a negative COVID test as well to get on the plane. Get on the plane, you get there, you get another COVID test. Um, you wait your 24 hours for wait your negative. 24 hours for your negative now but instead of being stuck in a resort they have an entire island so which entire, is quarantine island yeah so the entire island of phuket <laughs> nice is quarantine island you have to spend two weeks there but the government's also opening up more so now you can do seven days in phuket and then you can do they call it the seven and seven you can do the second seven in Kosamui or they're all little Koyao islands or Pidi Pidi Island. Cool. So we're gonna do seven days one island, seven days another island, and then we're free to go. After we don't have any plans after that. I mean we're gonna stay in Thailand. The plan is we're gonna buy a condo. Um, it's very affordable. You, you can't it buy sure land in, in Thailand as uh an international traveler or as a tourist. Um, you can pick up a second wife. It's possible. Don, I, Don if it means I can, or a second, Thailand or a forever? second husband. Um, yeah. my cousin. No, I have one husband's enough. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> my uh, my cousin um actually met a he. Uh, I'll tell the story off air. Anyway, so <laughs> the plan is we're going to buy a condo. Um, and depending on what you want to spend, it's like anything in life. You, the sky's the limit. Yep. But you can get a condo there for as cheap as thirty, twenty five, thirty thousand dollars, and. Maintenance fees are like three hundred bucks a year. We're looking to spend a little bit more than twenty five thirty because twenty five thirty you're getting a room and a hot plate, right? Um, and that's about it. If you know, you're going to supply the hot plate, yeah. yeah. <laughs> now again, condos in Sri Lanka or in Thailand for the most part don't have they call them European kitchens. Um, so there's no stove. The fridges are apartment size yep. or even bar size. Um, you get a hot plate and a microwave, and that's about it. So most people, what they do is they go to the food markets at night, and that's where they get their food. And it's so cheap to eat cheap. in Thailand. Yeah. It's cheap, cheaper than running the electricity to have a full size fridge. I mean, we say we're planning on buying a condo, but I've been doing a lot of research too. For four hundred bucks a month, you can get a really decent condo. Sometimes maybe even a small villa. Right. For four hundred bucks a month. It's, you figure it out, right? Can you and imagine that, being able to live a thousand dollars a month for everything? And then, ideally, would you rent it when you're not there? We, originally, our plan was maybe we'd buy three of these condos and rent two of them out, and you know, do it like yeah. an Airbnb. But after doing a lot of research, you're not getting a lot of return on it. No, it's not worth it. So the more the more we learn as we travel to these places, because we actually thought Sri Lanka might be. We loved Sri Lanka so much, and the people that we really thought maybe that would be the place. But I don't know. It's like the more you travel and, and learn about different places, you go. I find it interesting too, and it, which is wonderful because everyone always says, oh, I want to go to Costa Rica or I want to go somewhere in South America. But I think more and more people are really realizing what Asia's got to oh, offer. Yeah. And I also think a lot of the problem when people say, you know, I've been to Cuba seven times. I love it. I want to live there. They've always gone to an all-inclusive. Yep. That's not Cuba. That's not Cuba. No, you got to get <laughs> you off. You didn't experience Cuba at all. You, you experienced Cuba's sun. Yeah. That's all. And I, Cuba and about I, it. I, as, a, as I say, for our vacationing, we've still been, we're not brave. Hmm. So we've yet to, you know, maybe we'll go off site or we'll hire somebody local to take right. us somewhere. But I've always and come back. The good day experience. Yep. They're fun. Yep. But, but I want. For us, we want to see. Yeah. yeah you we want to immerse ourselves yes. in the culture. 
So we get ourselves an Airbnb in a town somewhere. But again, you probably go on a vacation one or two weeks a year. Exactly. Right. So we do our one week in an all-inclusive yes. between countries, yes. right? right? Exactly. So and we, we've done that in the past. Safe. We went to Cuba. We went all-inclusive. Uh, when we went to Thailand, though, I don't think we... No, we didn't. We, we traveled all over the place when we went to Thailand. Um, we went to it, the full moon party. I saw day. that. that it does look exciting. Um, and it's thing as you know, versus a vacation versus traveling. Right. right. And I think when you go on vacation, you're just trying to recharge. Relax. You're going for a week, maybe two. Yeah. So of course you and want all the booze you can drink. You want all the food you can eat. You yeah. want comfy beds. It also depends on your budget and what you yeah. make and what you're like the, the girls we met, their budget was triple ours. At least. So it was, we need a guide. We, you know, they're, they're the princess with the, the P. Right. The bed. If there's anything wrong, they're calling the front desk. Right. And like, you know, we'd be like, oh, this is really nice. Then, yeah. oh, I'm missing a towel. Wow. <laughs> yeah. You know, they, they stayed in the Maldives. And, and, you know, this is a place where 500 a night? Yeah. At least $500 a night. Right. But they had like. And, but it was gorgeous, you know, with the see through floor, oh. your your cabin's on stilts in the ocean. You can walk out the back right. door into Look the Look at ocean. those every time. And every time and they I were hit... complaining about this is happening. That's, yeah. I'm like, really? And every time I hit really? bulk, I go, nope. Yeah. And it's gorgeous. And, yeah. they're, and they're like complaining. Like, come on. Some people complain about everything. Some people aren't happy. There are in people life. who travel but don't take any risk. So if you have someone that books everything for you and makes sure your experience is perfect, then you're not you're not risking anything. Yeah. Whereas we end up in little huts with a million ants because you don't know, always know what you're going to get. Yeah. And then you just figure it out. And you got no travel agency back in your mistakes right. Right? Right. when you book it wrong. Yeah. Now you're just doing, uh, can we get out of here? We just get and our money back. Yeah. And they literally like, was counting out the money. Here you go. Sometimes I would get like a little down on myself. I'd be like, oh. That was a fail. Yeah. Right? And but how like, do you know? Well, yeah. that's it, right? And and you you, it's learned and you off. move on. And, and yeah. sometimes... I looked at their pictures and was like all jealous. I look at all these places and they're, and they're seeing it the best way. And then there's other times I'm like, meh, I'm okay with sometimes. But they were like, go, 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 go. Right. And yeah. I'm just, sometimes I just, we, if you want to stay a lot of places home we that go day? to, again, we're here for a month. We do like once or twice a week, we go do a day excursion. Yeah. And the rest yeah. of the day, we play cards. But I mean, our budget wouldn't afford us to do more than that, really. Right. And, but we find other things to do. Yeah, Some, sometimes we just walk the beach for a day. It's nice. You enjoy each other's company. Yeah. I can tell that. You can tell that watching your what you posted and everything. So some days we just go for a walk along the beach and yeah. a couple no, no. hours. I have tried to Oh boy. Hello. Oh. Hello, elder family. Hello. Hello. There we go. We've got special guests. But <laughs> uh there I thought it was Hobo Jim. I was oh. gonna have to get up and oh, boy. take him out. But uh, no, it, it, you can definitely see it's, and I also really enjoyed. So you've got the uh, the blog or the Mister and Mrs. Midlife Crisis, yep. and then watching your feed and watching your feed. Yeah, I really enjoyed that, um, and seeing what you posted versus what you posted, and you really do get the idea that it's cool because you're having your vacation, you're having your vacation. You know, there's days she didn't come down to the pool or vice versa. Yeah, and yeah. you, right? Just really enjoyable. I'm glad you had a good time. Thank you. Uh, thank you for sharing your good time because that was exciting. But uh, yeah. So, and uh, you said October. October, October 17th. 17th. So the plan is uh, uh, the weekend before that's Thanksgiving. We're going to do Thanksgiving with her family and then probably go back to the park and have Thanksgiving with some of the park people. Of course. And then the following weekend is the big shutdown, you know, winterize the trailer. Uh, we'll figure out where the car is going to be stored. You can pay people to do that. I know, but I think it's, I'd rather learn how to do it and save $200 every year. Nice. Yes, and then I don't know how much it is to open it as well. It's probably another 200 uh, So 400 a year. Yeah. I'd rather save the 400 a year here. It's not that difficult. No. So I'm blow, your, blow your lines out. Get lots of uh, yeah. an, uh, the right antifreeze. antifreeze. The stuff. Uh, yeah. I'll give, get to, when the guys are going to pick up that stuff, I'll give them some money and grab me some extra. And when we're blowing out everybody's lines, let's blow up mine. Yeah. <laughs> um, and then we're going to find somewhere to store the, the car yep. and uh, get somebody to take us to uh, our, our parents' place in Etobicoke, yep. which is like 15 minutes from the airport. I think there's lots of good places that have indoor storage. Uh, I haven't found in the one area. yet. Um, we'll talk about that. Off have air. availability. Okay, cool. That is 100% it. 
Because mm-hmm. mm-hmm. that's even and a lot of most of them are for trailers or for boats. Right. They don't really do cars, and I'm like, you can probably squeeze it in there. Yeah, in the yeah, corner yeah. Somewhere. Yeah. I'll pay half. <laughs> but maybe they're worried about. It's interesting because sure. maybe it's the fact that it's that it has know. gas in it. I don't. It doesn't matter. Anyway, I'd like to thank you so much. Um, what I always like to do. Um, we're going to probably be two weeks, three weeks away from posting it, but um, any shout outs or anything you want to mention that you guys really like, or you want to give a shout out to your insurance broker again. <laughs> if you need insurance and you're a nomad of any kind, uh, we used safety wing um, and it saved our ass. So don't travel without good travel insurance. Absolutely. Oh, sure. That is the lesson. Well, thank you very much for coming and fitting me in because I know you're busy. Um, and thank you for being a good fan because you know what? You've mm-hmm. liked, you've posted, you've commented, and not enough people out there do that. And I appreciate that. Yeah, um, so, so I also felt like it was kind of a way to catch up. And I enjoyed you in, uh, even in the barbershop, you and Watts having chats. Yeah. A few people cool. have enjoyed that. I'm like, right? I'm like, well, that's just who I am. If I had more time, I'd probably listen to more of them. I haven't listened to them all. I've listened to a few, though. Uh, you know what? They're there. And we're, uh, I think we're officially linked on Facebook now. So you can listen to it through the uh, RSS feed on Facebook. So. And I did listen to your first one of this. Yes. The second one was lacrosse. Well, well that's Not what... that interesting to me, so I didn't Nah, watch. but there's going to be ones, like yeah, I said. People um, will skip them. Yeah. And it'll be like, people, somebody will look here and be like. Brian Dean, yeah, let's skip that one. Two hours and 51 <laughs> minutes about travel. But you know what? There's a lot of. There's some good, some good in here. And like, right, mm-hmm. I'll go back and listen because I'll be like, there was one I raved about and said that's going to be my new thing to do. I've and already if, forgotten uh, what it was. And if people have questions, feel free to reach out at uh, Mr. and Mrs. Uh, Midlife Crisis on Instagram. Um, I've, I'm have i also putting, uh, so when I got the Instagram and the Facebook for Mr. and Mrs. Midlife Crisis, I also bought the website address. So that is in the works. That's cool. Because it sounds Merch like. Merch is coming next. sounds like great but again somebody that's done it done it a different way you'll have lots of knowledge and the ability to share that knowledge so that is really cool you don't don't have to live the nine to five (laughs) oh dear you hear that dear yes you do Uh, all right when you still got kids going to (laughs) post-secondary thanks so much all right thanks awesome hey Thanks for joining us on Scotty's Journey. Don't forget to like and follow us on Facebook and Instagram. And join us next time when Scotty tries to learn something new, because Scotty doesn't know. Scotty Doesn't Know is a Sawcast production. <laughs>